let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get about American treasure, Rory Calhoun. Uh, he was a film actor. He played a fancy cowboy in the movie Angel, which is about a teenage sex worker living it up in Las Vegas. Well, not really living it up because there's a murderer <laughs> that's a mur murdering her friends. So she's not really living it up. There's a lot of murder. Yeah. There's the a living. lot of murder, but, but Rory Calhoun is her elderly cow fancy cowboy friend uh and then she was also in is it motel hell or ho or, or i think or it's hell motel. it's hell motel is what hell it's called motel. yeah and he plays <laughs> a deranged cannibalistic farmer that paralyzes truckers with road hazards and buries them like cabbages uh That's one or, or throws them like cabbages you don't bury a cabbage well if you do if you're making kimchi yeah so you know, a cabbage in the hole is worth some kimchi later or something like that. However, that expression goes. <laughs> that's, kimchi that's is same. delicious. <laughs> kimchi is delicious. Uh, <laughs> Evan, do you know the first person who ever gave me kimchi? Uh, it it was do you when we were in high school? It was your girlfriend at the time's father who was a kind of an old hippie kind of type or you look like hmm. an old hippie type and he was um, like hey i buried some cabbage in the ground and do you want to eat it and i was like hell yeah who are who are we talking about what was her name shit i don't yeah hard it's hard to say i guess was it like cricket or something like that was that her name or a nickname oh dang yeah wait i knew who that is she's dead now Oh, never mind. I don't know who that is. Oh then. my God! Really? Yeah, she is. Jesus, maybe we shouldn't be talking about this. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Kevin, you might have to cut that. I don't know. I mean, if she, <laughs> if she died from like cabbage, then yes. We didn't. We that didn't is, say her name. That would be tragic. Yeah. And I'm not going to. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's yeah, fine. We didn't, we didn't say her name, and I'm not going to say her no. name. Right. Evan, yeah, yeah. We can right. talk about this now. Isn't it weird <laughs> that someone that you've had sex with is dead? Because I have someone um, who I've had sex with is dead now too. Really? Well, yeah. she, we this was when I we were really young. I she and I didn't have sex, but uh, and, and the um, order of those events is important. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that didn't happen. Oh. <laughs> she well, we didn't. I didn't have sex with her after she was dead either. I feel neither, weird about neither it. Neither alive nor dead. I feel weird about the fact <laughs> that they can talk about my dick in the afterlife. Dang, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or what that if they don't talk about it? Would that be like disappointing? <laughs> well, yeah. you, know what I think, you know what I hate about ghosts? Which was worse, you know? Yeah. Let me tell you a couple things. Let me tell you two things that I hate about ghosts. One is... <laughs> Ten one things is, I hate about I'm ghosts. Fucking... <laughs> I'm going to give you D2 uh, two? things that I hate about ghosts. And... uh. Are, and so, like, the first thing is, ghosts are very self-centered. Like, the, you know, they're back for their fucking unfinished business, and they make it everybody else's problem. They're like, hey, and you have to figure out why I'm The fact that they're this. repeating their personal or, trauma. And and not oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, that. Yeah. That, yeah. Is, that is really that's cool. How annoying, yeah. how annoying and self-important. Yeah. Um, also, yeah. Why, do, why do people always think that ghosts like are like they have knowledge i mean other than like they go on to well they they didn't go on to the afterlife because or you know they didn't go to a heaven or a hell or a whatever um you know uh a back rooms or whatever yeah. it is these they weren't good or bad enough to amount to anything 
Yeah. So like, why would <laughs> Maybe. they? Why would they know any more than anybody else? I think they'd just be. They'd be just as. Much they of a usually don't. Anyone who's alive. Well, they would know everything about yeah, that particular they? location, I mean, like where they died. They would know everything about it because they've been there since they died. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, I think it could give you like clues into the past. Like, I think the D and D movie did a good job uh, of showing like the usefulness of spells like that. Um, but the new D and D movie, not the terrible one with Jeremy Irons, where. You know, yeah. they have the terrible, the bad CGI dragons with Thor Birch. Although I love Thor Birch. Um, but the anyway. The new D&D movie was awesome. Yeah. What? The new D&D movie was awesome. It oh, was yeah, fun. Was really Dude. Like a fucking rat. Yeah. I saw that in the theater. Yeah, it was excellent. Uh, but um, what, why were we talking about that? Why were we talking about ghosts? I know. Ghosts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I and to talking you why to I the. About ghosts. Two things I hate about. Yeah, what's the second? I'm not, really <laughs> on, I'm not real big on ghost movies either, most of the time, except for I really like The Ring. Um, Me too. I think I watched. I think we saw The Ring together like multiple times when it first came out. I remember. Dude, I haven't to seen it. Neil, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Him, like he sc- literally screamed <laughs> like with actual fear. I saw it with him like two or three times and he like screamed every time it scared him so bad. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, the ring. Yeah, I'm, I don't I don't really I don't really give a shit about go- no offense, Chris. I know you're a ghost man, but I you know, I just I don't really care. I don't really well, I'm not saying that they don't thing. exist. I'm not saying they don't exist. I just think that they're annoying. You're not wrong. They are often very self centered and it's about them. But also yeah, they don't normally know shit. Like, in, whenever I talk yeah. with them, like, in the nesting rods and stuff like that, yeah. there's usually not a whole lot of information that they can tell me. They can tell yeah, me stuff, well, like, like yeah. about, like, what's happening right now around me. They're really good at that. And yeah. the past, they don't know the future. They don't know what's going to happen. They're like, eh. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, you see, I this is somewhat related to what we're talking, or what we're going to be getting into tonight, because uh, I, I was hesitant at first to put a ghost in this adventure uh but i did so because huh because you hate them so much because i hate them you so hate much. ghosts i hate ghosts <laughs> i like ghost pokemon no like you're a ghost ghost Dude, you're the... a ghost <laughs> that's what i like when things like i like when things like fuck up ghosts maybe that's why i like ghostbusters when i was a kid but like oh yeah <laughs> I like when I, well, I like the idea of something like being used to the like used to being like oh, I'm a ghost. I can nothing can harm me, and then something mm-hmm. happens to them, and, and then like, something the does. And they don't. And they don't know <laughs> how to react. They don't know how to react to it. Yeah, Bill Murray just squirts on them, and they're like, "I'm done." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um. The- what I just want to say real quick, the the foulest thing though about Ghostbusters is the Dan Aykroyd ghost blowjob scene. I just can't. Oh, I know it. I know it's just I and you know, and I'm not a prudish person by any means, but I just don't want to see Dan Aykroyd in that state of affairs. You know, I, I like <laughs> the man. I don't. I, I just don't want to see that. And like more recent, like uh, on streaming services and stuff, like it's that's not in there. Huh. Well, that's what? one of the one the rare you cases get where like I would want to just not have of Ghostbusters to see the old uh, the old Aykroyd GBJ. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm normally very like uh like a I don't like censorship typically, but I in this case I feel like it's the best that they you remove can, that you can do without the boo job. <laughs> yeah, boo job. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, we should probably uh start the show. Uh, That'd be great. Another yeah, yeah, yeah. That should be a thing we do at some point. Yeah. Condor and crows hissing on the wind, man. On a ship, we're hanging our we're hanging our dirty laundry out. That's drying on the sea breeze, baby. Uh, <laughs> yes. That's all I got, man. Sure. Um, Sam, I think we call it like Sam a Cutter Crow's Halloween Borg adventure or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. This was going to be for Halloween, but yeah. Like, All Hallows Borg. Yeah, All Hallows Borg. I love that. 
That's what. In the <laughs> thumb, yeah. That should be in the thumbnail for sure. Yeah. Uh, but yes, this is where we could go. What you said, I, I could put that in there too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, just pretend that this is has already been filmed before a live studio audience um, for Halloween, and uh, we're actually and just ahead that. because for I next feel like year. everything. We're doing yeah, it for and, next year. We're just doing it ahead of time. If you're if you're really a monster, true inside of your heart, you know, then every day is Halloween, and you can just be empowered by that. I'm fucking right. Yes. Kind of. You know. Black not what Lady Gaga said. Every day. Yeah. Exactly. So tonight we're doing a little um, adventure that I made up that. Uh, is your classic haunted house uh, fair, except for with a more board twist. So mm. it's going to be, oh my God, you know, blood and guts and anal seepage and all that stuff. With <laughs> dirty old for Halloween. I told you about my chicken wings. There's dirty plenty of anal seepage over here. And dirty old, filthy old. <laughs> Dick in the head, pervert, ghosts, and you know things like that. Does that, maybe other people don't play board board like that? I don't know. I mean, I've watched a lot of let's plays, but I feel like not all of them lean into you know the filthier side of of uh, any I kind of role just, playing when I'm involved. I, th I think that's kind of you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I think you're yeah. the one that yeah. leans into the <laughs> filthy. Yeah. 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 We're right. Uh, we're a special I, group. Like we're just yeah, all about it. Yeah. Well, I just see filth everywhere, you know. I see just see filth everywhere. And it's uh I don't know. The filthiness of life is is realism, man. Or something like that. Anyway, so yeah, we're all I hear playing that. different everyone's playing different characters tonight. We're playing characters that were um created from a uh, homebrew class that I made called the Ghoulish Geyser, which is sort of a hell raising Trick or treater class. So um, everyone has a different costume, which gives them various benefits. Um, they also have a treat bag, which they can pull from D3 times per day to produce some sort of volatile, you know, sweet treat. Um, and then, the, you know, it can be eaten and then it bestows some sort of special thing onto them. But uh, I don't remember what everyone is what everybody's costume so whoever wants to start um describing their character that would be great i'll start just because i got a spitball it so i might as well just do it now yeah i am a pallid corpse of a vengeful revenant so i look like a pale corpse so more or less like a zombie kind of that sort of deal that's the real you though right the under the costume yeah. Yeah, yeah that's really what I thought you yeah. meant. Like a it's Solomon just, Grundy type? That's like falling off. Solomon Grundy, yeah. <laughs> Not but that smaller, big. But, pr yeah. but probably, yeah, but probably smaller because these are all like, they not necessarily children. There's a lot of different things that you could potentially be in, you know, that's in the table or you could just come up with. But uh, my idea was like that these are typically more cute or uh, more like child sized, but, you know, it could hey. also just be whatever you want it to be. Um, no, that works. Yeah, that's cool. So I'm just... Uh, hints, the, hints the low hit dice and everything else, you know. Yeah, and then... Yeah. Hang on, we gotta get PT Medicine. But then my costume is a scavenged skeleton. So I just have like a skeleton costume on. Yeah. Very similar to what nice. I kind of am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it has like a special ability where undead will not be hostile towards you unless you take some sort of hostile action towards them. Exactly. And then also my damage, uh, it reduces damage by native by D2. Yeah. Not 5D2, but 1D2. Yeah. He said. <laughs> did you I... say 5D2 or did I? Did no. I... no. By, by D2. Yeah. Oh, by D2, yes. 5D2. <laughs> that's 5D2. How that's such a very weird and specific like dice. 
<laughs> yeah. No, like, why, you know, take 5 d 2 damage. Like, <laughs> all right, oh, probably dead. And, um, yeah, probably. Now what? My weapon is technically a staff, but it's just a long ass bone. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And then equipment, I have a treat bag that has an ectopop in it, which we don't know what that does yet. But I can carry up to 10 items, um, and I can do D3 times pull, day, a, treat out of pull a candy. Um, and I have a medicine chest that has three uses, which stops bleeding and heals D6 HP. And I also forgot about this. I have a little monkey running around me. Yeah, yeah, that, that loves you, but it doesn't um, listen to you. It just doesn't yeah. jump in. But, but it does love you, it just doesn't take corners. Yeah. <laughs> At least from you, anyway. Which is yeah. what a pet monkey would do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> does the that... monkey have a costume as well? Uh, yeah. And <laughs> Good, that's the only answer. Is a... Little clown costume. A little, <laughs> I love it. I love it. And also, that's very unnerving I, to imagine like a monkey dressed as a clown. Like, I'm not afraid of clowns. And and terrifier of mouth. Yeah, I'm more <laughs> afraid of monkeys. I'm more afraid of monkeys than I am clowns. But yeah. that just that combination just seems pretty creepy. Yes. And then my name is Gravy, like <laughs> Gravy Baby. Yeah, Gravy. I love it. Maybe it is. Maybe. Well, I am a quivering mask wearing a witch mask. But if you listen real close, it sounds like this. <laughs> the whole time. I love it. And I've got a knife. And the spell I got was the one about becoming invisible. So I can become yeah. invisible for periods of time and do a little stabby stabby. That's and great. Perfect. The candy that I got was the candy thumb, which I can eat for that D4 to a roll. Yeah, that's great. Excellent. What got was your character of... name? Fartilda or something like that? Fartilda, yep. <laughs> Fartilda. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, I'll go. Mine's uh, he's like a Wendigo of sorts. It's called it's called the Berserk Beast is what you call is what it was called on the table. But anyway, yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's just like a bunch of pelts just sort of like, you know, sewn together. Piled on. Yeah, with, yeah. Uh, with like uh, with like a deer skull just sort of strapped onto my head. Yeah. Nice. One of the antlers is broken. Nice. And I uh, and I, and I have a knife. Which is my own, my only weapon, and um, I guess I and I didn't know. I just asked John to help me with the the um, the spells, so I don't have my spell because I just figured out how to oh. how to use it because I didn't know oh, how to yeah. use it before, so I didn't have anything written down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Was it just you had a random scroll? Is that what it was? Uh, yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, because yeah, in your starting gear. Okay, what do you remember if it was yeah. unclean or sacred? Oh yeah, you can't use I forgot something. Yeah, about we can't use uh, sacred scrolls, yeah. So it would have to be an unclean one. I think it's what you said. Yeah, so that's what it Yeah, D ten for that for uh, that uh... Oh, roll a D ten? Yeah, yeah, yeah. D ten for the random unclean scroll. Seven. 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 So you've got uh Metzwa Metzwell it's like Metzwaddle blind your eye or something like that. A creature becomes invisible for D6 rounds. Oh, so you got the invisibility one like Kristen. Oh um, man. Oh, okay. So or do you want that or do you want to roll for a different one? It's up to you. I'll roll for it. I'll I'll I think I'll keep that one actually. Okay. Visible that's all right boy. with everyone else. <clears throat> yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh god damn it, I roll my, my D ten fell on the floor. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Did you roll for your I'm other equipment? Did you roll for your other equipment or was that Oh yeah. 
Um, I get. I guess I didn't. Did it? Is there something I'm missing? Um, let me see. Oh, my candy. Yeah. My which piece of the piece of candy? Yeah. Sorry. Well, there's also the starting gear kit that for that just like every character rolls. Um, I yeah, I don't have all the. That's what I was asking for when I. Oh, okay. said I'm I didn't so sorry, everyone. Earlier. I'm so sorry. sorry. Okay, no, it's okay. I, I fall. <laughs> Uh, so we'll just do the. It only takes a second, though, really. Um, oh, okay. I was like, uh, do I do I really need anything other than my knife and my candy bag? You know. Yeah, but I, like, I mean, yeah. If you don't, if you don't care about it, then that's fine. I mean, there is some extra stuff, but I mean, what? It's you know, whatever. Oh, fine. Because it is. Uh, um. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, I'm cool with it. Okay. All right, and and, yeah. and what is your um? What does your costume do? I forget. I know it acts oh, as okay, no. tier one I can, armor. They all act as tier one armor, but then they have like an additional. I can um, I can grow claws. Oh nice. yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can just act twice per round. Yeah, I have claws. At, all right, and I have to activate. That's what that was another thing I have to had to know about my activation of my powers, yeah. so I can do it twice per day. Yeah. Um. Yes. And uh, what was the other thing about it? Uh. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, and I can oh, see in the dark. The dark. Uh, yeah, I think that's like the default thing is that you can see in the dark. Since you're like a beastie. Yeah. And what is your like... character's name? Oh, dang. Okay. Um, <sighs> Billiam. Billiam. Billiam uh, Rehnquist. Right. What's that? Billiam Rehnquist. Billiam Rehnquist. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> And last, he's, uh, certainly not left. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, he's uh, it, it, the the other thing I rolled was that he's uh, he's burned. That's what I look like oh, under my costume. Yeah. I have, yeah, I have yeah, yeah. horrible scars because I'm burned. Yeah, just terrible. Yeah, yes, I love that. Well, because <laughs> I don't love that. That's actually horrifying. <laughs> one of my one of my fears. But um, but no, I I uh, I just was I love. I love random tables and I just for I wanted like multiple options for what everybody would look like underneath their costume. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. I just imagine how nasty that would be and you know, they're all melted. <laughs> Once you take you take my mask off and it's just this like, you know, scars all over the, you know. <laughs> yeah. Man. I love random shit. Especially no hair grows. Like I love like I have to think too much, just yeah, cool going with it. Yeah, and Kevin, I think you're the last one. Uh, what is your character's name? I am Carl Middleton, 87 year old former insurance salesman. On the job, <laughs> they called me the devil, and when I was forcefully retired, they gave me a mask, a wooden carved devil mask. Little did they know it was cursed. <laughs> Watch nice. travel the night, go from house to house, selling insurance. I don't understand what this trick or treat knowledge is all about. But one hand, <laughs> I've got a shim made from a former letter opener and a briefcase of too many tools in case they don't let me inside. <laughs> it's very important that we all be well insured because death <laughs> can happen at any time. <laughs> oh my God. That's a good point. <laughs> Holy Excellent. hell, that forehead, I just couldn't, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and, and you are, your character, um, he was, you rolled for the, for the, like, option of what's underneath your costume, and you're, what was it, elder? Man. Yeah, you're actually an 87 year old man. And that's why who is just trying to feel young again, you know, is well, that's just the general idea of what that one was. Basically, you know, someone who's a child at heart, and that's why the trick or treat. But I, I also what just, this trick or treat now that it's about <laughs> but I'm I here this, to work. I love this take on it much better where yeah. Well, he's really to get in the way of a honest gentleman trying to purvey his trade. <laughs> I imagine the way that your costume fits is like how Hank's devil costume was on King of the Hill. When yeah. it was like, <laughs> it's like too small. It's like very tight. Yeah, he's he's just shrunken. You know, it's like 
very Yoda like in stature. <laughs> Wooden mask and a suit. Carrying a briefcase. Carrying a briefcase and a shin, as one does. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you're from this quiet little pissant village. Um, and uh, it, it's a special time of year where you go from home to home threatening to harass or harm people unless they give you goods, but also singing them uh, tunes that are supposed to drive away evil spirits. Um, but it's really more so the threat of violence or, or you know, damage to personal property that makes people generally go along with what you want. Um, but uh, you are all just in a, in a small mob of like-minded individuals, um, small urchins, clad in crudely constructed monster costumes meant to scare away supposed spirits. But in truth, none of you have ever seen any sort of like ghost or anything really all that supernatural. Although uh, when once you found your masks and, and uh, crafted your costumes, you learned that, you know, there's more to the natural world that meets the eye. Which is why it's important to have insurance. <laughs> Very true. Very true. It's true. So, uh, in this little um, little shitty town of Toad Wallow, uh, <laughs> it's very mu it's perpetually muddy there. Uh, but everybody's going from house to house, yelling and screaming, asking for, or demanding, not asking for, some sort of treat. Sometimes people, most people don't give you actual sweets because those are, you know, harder to come by, or at least harder to come by for people that live in this town. Um, although you might occasionally get a very dense and extremely bitter black piece of chocolate that's got a few hairs on it or um or maybe like <laughs> a crystalline stone-like piece of just molten candy that had gone rigid long ago and will probably Can break your candy? teeth if you bite it's down on it um but most people give you like they might give you like a piece of bread or an apple that's not you know too rotten or you know, or maybe some sort of maybe a, a pig's foot, um, nice. or, you know, porky brine dripping from it, uh, or maybe an egg. People might give you like a chicken egg or a goose egg or something. Well, this whole uh, thing sounds great. Bag. What's that? This whole thing sounds great. This is a good, this is a good trick or treat. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's all kinds of mischief going on. Um, this is the only time of the year where children in the town are treated with much respect and are treated um, as anything other than, like, basically a human pet. Um, but uh, the, the kids in the town, because of this local, um, this local custom, throughout the year, children are meant to be extremely obedient to their parents, um, like, to the point of, like, being completely subservient to them um no matter what uh in exchange for during this one night of the year they could basically just go wild um but they have to honor the rules to some extent so if, if someone offers them or you know gives them some sort of food um then or treat or what ha what have you then they're not supposed to you know damage the person's home or cause many problems but uh sometimes the rules get broken but to alleviate that problem, there are two uh, mostly sober guards that are just wandering the town near the street lights, um, street lanterns, you know, making sure that the mischief doesn't get too out of hand. <clears throat> so what's everyone going to do? It's pretty early. Uh, it's pretty early evening, by the way. Like the, the sun just went down. Sun just went down. It's not super dark yet. No. Okay. Pretty chilly. Yeah, I mean, but, we just but go your to the first house, right? Mm, yeah. What's that? Well, 
Are we in a group already, or are we all just separated? You're with like a small horde of other children who are currently looking at all the different things that they've got in their sacks and are taking a small break from going house to house to have a little treat. Oh, right on. You'll hear like yeah, one stop. one kid will be like, I got a piece of my candy. And another one will be like, I just got some buttons. You know. <laughs> And then another one's like, oh, I got a lamb shank or something like that. You know. <laughs> so there's like some petty squabbling amongst them for like who gets the best, you know, mm. treat. I don't know, just eat a piece of bread and, you know, get ready to go to the next house, right? Yeah. Yeah, just whenever everybody's ready, I'm <laughs> let's go to the next house. Yeah, let's go. Um, most people, like most adults in the town right now, aside from like the guards and, you know, people that are in charge of businesses and things, uh, are mostly trying to hurry and get inside and hope that they have enough, you know, <laughs> things to give. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, 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 there's just an air of nervousness. Uh, even like some of the animals you see, like dogs and cats, like they're hiding under porches because they know that like all, all hell will break <laughs> loose. Yeah, they're gonna be dead cats hanging from poles. <laughs> exactly that type of, <laughs> that type of party. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. So okay, so are you guys just all approaching the same house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, pull out a discard and I'm running on my uh, sales pitch. Okay. <laughs> So you walk up, you guys uh, form a mostly organized line, although there's a little bit of pushing and prodding and everything. Um, but this uh, this elderly couple lives here. Um, the old man is like peeking out from like behind the like behind the door while his wife is like standing in front, and she's like nervously offering this bowl full of what looks like to be like probably very hard um, jerky. No, no no telling how old it is, but she's got like a pile of it. I'm good with it. Take some jerky. Yeah. yeah okay. So, I so everyone... I, I hand her a card. Have you considered full-term health insurance? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have she's very startled by you asking her that but also she has no idea what health insurance is or how it works <laughs> she has no idea <laughs> but she's very startled by you saying that story. I'm not tearing go and that's the first step she says I, I don't understand <laughs> don't understand what you're asking me she's like please just take a take some jerky and go please i don't want any trouble from anyone my husband is very sickly oh then he should definitely be insured he should get back to me as soon as possible he could die at any moment and if you're not well insured (laughs) who's gonna take care of you once he's gone she says he's your man she says, well, I suppose I've never thought about that before. She says, I, I may need, be need, like needing your services, you know, sooner than later. My, my husband's been quite ill for some time now. He accidentally swallowed an oxtail bone and hasn't passed it yet. Oh, God. It's all the time. Of, more, than, more than you think. A lot of problems. My, my number's on the card. In the meantime, I'll take some of this. Um, this. What? Is it? what this. My number's on the card. Remember, Carl Middleton, he's your man. <laughs> so what does this card look like? Like, what does it have on it? It's got a logo for a business he no longer works for, you know, with name, a phone number. Phone number? Phones? <laughs> 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 Is he from the future? <laughs> so, so in your mind, 
saying that's what you think is on the card, but it's really right. just a lot of like scribbles and like probably. Well, it's gonna be arcane, it's it's gonna be arcane glyphs, you know, probably some yeah. like uh, vague threats and uh, prophecies and you know conspiracies. <laughs> well, it, it's a tattered piece of paper that if if you could somehow manage to find the other pieces of it, it might actually be a, a scroll that you can potentially use if you can put it all together. He's probably torn that apart into business cards, yes. <laughs> or cut them Fair apart. They, they are, you know, like a one and a half by three inch piece of paper. Yeah. So that's what you hand to this woman. Correct. She takes it and she <laughs> says, uh, uh, thank you. And then like, <laughs> a kid put a kid like two kids behind you are like pushing on your back and they're like, yeah, you know, you know how kids are. Yeah. So um, so everyone add a add a piece of jerky to your inventory. And uh, the next house, um, next door, you see, you don't see anyone on the porch, um, but you do notice that there's like a hammering sound coming from inside, and you see them just blocking their windows with planks. That's fair. They're blocking their windows with planks? And... Yes. Okay. Like, okay. I'm so, like they're this is just the next house. This is just the next house we came to. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think they've got anything. I think we're gonna have to destroy this house. What I'm seeing <laughs> is that they're preventing an honest man from plying his trade. That's what that is, I. That is yes. offensive, bastards. That is offensive. Yes. How what he they? what he said. How dare they! <laughs> I say we move on to the next house. I say we go to the... I'm going to the door. <laughs> I want to go to the be, door. It must be set an example of. <laughs> Agreed. One of the other ki- one of the other children is walking behind you, and he just... He takes... He, he pulls his uh, costume down and just takes a big greasy shit right there on the porch. Um, well done, young man. Well done. <laughs> this is shit. This situation is absolutely shit. <laughs> Yeah, Are you just... gonna knock on the door? Yeah. Yes. Knock 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 knock. You you knock on the door and all you hear inside is more like like stuff being shuffled around, like scraped against the floor, like you know, like a table's getting dragged across the floor or something, then more hammering. <laughs> I'm gonna do it one more time. Knock, knock, knock. You knock and it stops for a second. And you hear, like, in front of you, you hear, like, a little metal flap lift up. And you hear a voice saying, please go. (laughs) Why would we do that? You're going to feed us. I said, we don't have anything. We're a struggling family. Isn't that unfortunate? You certainly do have a lot of boards. They say yes, we had to dismantle. We had to tear our beds apart. Hmm. Give us some boards. You have beds. You yeah, say. we need some boards. <clears throat> yeah. I <laughs> think we didn't have beds. We slept <laughs> on. We slept on the floor, and we had to make that floor by like leveling out the dirt. With our tongues <laughs> to moisten the dark sufficiently so that we can rest upon it. <laughs> the old man is yelling. <laughs> and I'm just going to look at him for a second and be like, yeah. <laughs> they, said we, we don't want, they said, we're not going to open the door. We're not giving you any planks. Hmm. I open up my toolbox. Uh, I, I, I wish I set it down. I pull out my drill, which apparently I have. <laughs> I go to the, I go to the hinges. That's what's on the toolbox. Oh drill. yeah, it's one of the one of the crank one of the um, yeah. yeah like a like an drill. like an yeah, auger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There should be hinges on the door, and they start drilling through the hinges. 
<laughs> they say, what are you doing? Stop, please. What are you doing? You can't tell what he's doing? <laughs> I don't take no for an answer. <laughs> I, I've been making 87 years by taking yeah, no for an answer, young man. They, they hear the noise, but they don't know what. Like, they can't see. They just see Kevin, like, oh, shoved up right. against the door. They don't, and they just, and they hear the metal, you know, going through the woods. So they're like, what is, you know, what's going on? And you, and you hear like, um, a woman like yell inside. And two of the other kids, uh, like come over and they're like, yeah, do it, do it. Let's burn the place, burn them all. <laughs> That's what is I was going to suggest anyway. Situation. Which sort of, yeah. You have fire insurance, which is Basically. an optional package that I offer. And I would have offered if you'd listen to my sales pitch. <laughs> one, of the ki- one of the children that's like telling you to burn them all uh, is wearing a brown costume. That it's hard to decipher what he's supposed to be, but he looks like a potato. And... <laughs> Hey, and potato, you got kid, any matches? Yeah. <laughs> and the, other, the other kid, the other kid <laughs> has just a ridiculous amount of flour. His, his costume is just all flowers. And, like, he just looks like a mass of flowers with, like, you can see, like, the bottom, the bottom part of his, his mouth. Um, is he a summer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe. He's a flower ghillie suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the weird thing is when he like walks by, you can see like tiny little plants like sprouting up where he had previously been. Oh, okay. neat. <clears throat> um, but anyway, they're like, they're yelling about like wanting to burn the house down. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Kevin, are you still just drilling the, trying to drill the uh, door I part basically? Door. Or yeah, dismantle I'm... the door with the drill? Correct. Okay. So, <laughs> so they're scre- they're yelling and screaming, um, <clears throat> and the door falls off. Everyone who's at the door, please make an agility test. Agility. I was up there too, huh? <clears throat> Probably. Twenty-one. I'm a very spry. 87 year old man. Yes. Yes. Got a six. You got a six? Three. Oh, Chris. <laughs> what did you got? Three? Three. Okay. Well, you, have all. <laughs> you heard the people inside. They had been, you know, yelling and screaming and telling you guys to stop. Well, they didn't know what to do. So they had had um, a uh, pot of boiling water oh uh, fuck and they had a pan and they scooped up the water and flung it at you guys so anyone who did not um so it's just chris and evan right that you failed your the only one failed three. oh you got a three okay we so all failed kevin. except kevin, for kevin kevin despite being the one that's up close <laughs> He unscrews <laughs> the door. Well, what what happens is the door kind of protects him as he's like right. That's what I figured. Around with it <laughs> under the door. Yeah, I, yeah so I have the agility plus three, but toughness plus one. So I'm just under the door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone else takes three points of damage from scalding Fuck. hot water. <laughs> <sighs> but don't forget you have armor on though, so you can reduce that. Oh you know. right. You reduce some of okay. that. Okay, so roll a d6 then. Yeah, it's a it's a d3. Yeah, you're ne- negating. So one to two is one. Oh, right, right. Three I got to you. Four is it's two, two then. Five to six is... Okay. I have reduced damage by d2, so Oz evens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or you can just do that. Oh wait, did I say d3 or d2? You uh, said the base d2. armor is d2. Yes, D two. Okay, yeah. Oh, I was looking at it wrong. Three damage. Well, you've got fancy armor. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know. But, I then, guess. but then your armor negates it. But negates what? Two of it? Is that what you said? I have a D two. I rolled a one. 
Okay, so one. you negate yeah. one damage. So you take two points. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. And Chris, did you take? Did you uh, roll? Um, did you uh, roll for your armor? I did. Yep. I took uh, one off. Did two damage. Okay, cool. All right. So <laughs> she burns the shit out of almost everyone. Um, <laughs> The, the flower kid uh, ended up getting blasted with it because the potato kid grabbed him and moved him in front of the water. Um, <laughs> oh. Blasted and the, he burnt his chins, like bubbled up, and he's screaming and flowers are falling off. They're falling off, and when they hit the ground, they just wither immediately. Fuck. And he's just like screaming, and the potato kid's like cackling. He's cackling. <laughs> And he pull, he pulls out um this like switch, uh, and he like with like a stick with like little thorns on it, and he mm -hmm. run he runs up towards the open door. <laughs> um, what is everyone going to do? I want to cast my spell and turn myself invisible. Okay, <laughs> so make a presence test, which for you for that spell is uh, dr ten. Instead of VR twelve, I'm going to pee and get another beer. Go for it. Nice. <laughs> uh, thirteen. All right. So you go invisible um, for six rounds. Three. three, or until damaged. Uh, yeah, or until you're damaged. So that's cool. Um. All right. So you just. You just start reading the scroll and just disappear. Or however you want to describe that. You could go reverse hollow band if you want. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Um, I think maybe just mutter some more words and it's just gone. Love it. So it also if you attack, uh, or if you're defending from an attack, it's just DR6 for now. So super easy. <laughs> Nice. Um, okay, so what? So Chris did that. What's everybody else doing? I'm just. I want to watch this. I want to see what happens. The only person watch... that you can see right this moment is the man. Because um, I just got burned anyway. Yeah, you did. Yeah. So is I'm gonna man... step back <laughs> and let this happen. <laughs> okay. You gotta let the uh, let the potato <laughs> kid go. Yeah. All right, while I'm trapped under the door, I'm going to uh, pull out a candy cane and start nibbling on the end of it. <coughs> yes. For, for energy. Mint shiv. Excellent. Okay, so, um... So, Corey, what are you going to do? Or did Corey already go? He had to go to the bathroom. He, he went oh, yeah, as yeah. in he's not in the room anymore. Corey transformed yeah. into a small dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. That's probably what it was. Oh yeah, and also Corey's monkey. I forgot his, his monkey uh, <clears throat> is is just hooting and hollering and and whooping and jingling. It's got little bells on its costume. It's jingling around and <laughs> carrying on. It did not get burned, thankfully. Good, good. But it was quite scared of the water, like splashing and you know, burning people. So it's pretty worked up right now. <laughs> it's definitely pissing its pants. <laughs> but to be fair, it was pissing its pants before that even happened. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Just, you know, typical monkey shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> typical uh, monkey anyway, piss. So, so we, so we can... Uh, you know, just cut this bit out in editing, right, Kevin? Well, this will yeah. be removed and post. Uh, yeah, normally, yeah. I, I've been well, cutting out the just kind of staring at his face going, oh, or we'll put in an advertisement for, like, dog salts or something like that. And, you know. <laughs> Is your dog too moist? My dog's too moist. <laughs> that looks like oh, no. That dog's absolutely dripping. <clears throat> Get out of here. She needs some salt. 
Salt her up. Oh. Pack her down. <laughs> Salt her Pack up. Her down, Pack dog. Her down. <laughs> <laughs> How absurd. Speaking of salt, I always hated when people put salt on slugs. It always made me really mad. Yeah. It should, yeah. I oh, feel like uh, it should. It's like saying, I get mad when people torture things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do, well, yes. I do yeah. in general, but also, but especially I feel like something that's so slow that can't, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, that can barely defend itself. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like people that do things like that should be, um, they should be like tied down and put slugs, like some sort of slug that that eats know, their brains or something. Their, <laughs> that just licks their skin <laughs> off. <if they're laughs> radical, you know? Oh well, there you go. That too. <laughs> but you have to put something on. Like a slug will do that anyway, but it wouldn't really. It'd have to be some like huge slugs. Or if you know what, if for no, cool. nothing else, yeah. maybe just put food on them, and then the slugs and snails will get on them, and then they'll be like, "Ah, they're on me!" You know, maybe it'll be more <laughs> of a psychological, uh, psychological torture, <laughs> more of a psychological torture. You know, or uh, if you were to fill their mouth and eyes with salt. Yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> even better. That's the that's the only spot on a human that has a similar effect to pouring salt on a slug, so yeah. you know in the eyes, and probably in the mouth, but a little bit less so. But still, it would be really um, it, would, it would be bad. Yeah, <laughs> it shouldn't have dried them up. <laughs> this is the weirdest dog salt commercial ever. But you know, we're we'll with it. It'll be fun. <laughs> Someone will buy it. Brought <laughs> to you oh, by Hunter 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 Hunter. Hunter. Some reason, But for some reason, <laughs> so. but there will be a person in the commercial who's saying you shouldn't have dried them up. <laughs> <laughs> like, but how is that in support of the product? <laughs> the person that's saying it will be very unlikable. So, they'll just try to make it like they'll try to use whatever like information they have as far as the you know the audience that they're expecting and they're going to just make the person just absolutely shrill and annoying or maybe if, i think i think it's better if they just <laughs> actually if they just did like a test where they they were like what are the most annoying traits that everyone hates in common you know and then they give them to that person Consider our budget, though, I'm probably going to do like the uh, like tampon commercial method, where we'll have like a field or maybe like a like an ocean scene, and we'll it, we'll just be talking yeah. in the background. Yeah, 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 that could work. Yeah, shutting the dry them up. <laughs> that's the type of thing. That's it, that's the type of negative attitude that's kept dogs moist and wanting for far too long. <laughs> <laughs> to you by Cutter Crow Industries. <laughs> We're still waiting any day for that American Kennel Club sponsorship. <laughs> any day now. Oh, Corey, you were the last one. That's that's what we were um we were wanting to see what you were going to do after you got a little scalding. Not oh, a scolding, but a scalding. A scalding. What else do? What did everyone else do? Uh, Fartilda went invisible. I'm gnawing on a midshiv. Billiam is waiting and seeing. Uh, your monkey is soiling itself, and uh, you're doing... Oh, the potato kid um, oh. has a switch. Yeah. He's got a little switch with thorns on it, and he's running up to the door where that... the open door that, uh, that was dismantled. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit little potato kid. You're going to hit the potato kid? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Go ahead and go for it. Make an attack roll. <clears throat> we'll add to it. Uh, strength. Um, it's just strength, which is not yeah. anyone in this group's, uh, you know. No, so I got seven. Okay. 
So you try to swing your bone staff at him, but he was just a little too fast for you. You swung like just at the air, basically, as he just took off. So he's running, and he <clears throat> jumps up and just starts whipping the shit out of the guy with the frying pan. The guy's trying to, <laughs> the guy's trying to protect his face, but he's just getting lashed in the back of his arms and in the belly, and he's screaming and yelping, and the kid's just laughing as he's lashing the shit out of him. Uh, the flower kid is still <laughs> crying just in the corner, like by the corner of the porch, just holding his mouth, as and flowers are just dropping off of him and withering away. Fuck. <laughs> I'm just going to um, watch this kid getting kid attacking the old man and just sort of laugh are, about it so far. Are you going inside? Or cuz cuz like he just as he's whipping him, he's like they're like, oh, the okay. guy's walking backwards like further into the house. Yeah, I'll I'll follow inside. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to let the potato kid go first. <laughs> he's okay, my so meat shield. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. So, so you, you walk into this, this room. Um, it's uh, you, there are boards, there are dismantled chairs and tables and doors. <laughs> Damn it! Like different, different planks that they. It looks like they had <clears throat> already planned this, you know, in advance. Um, but they somehow didn't get around to boarding things up just yet. Um, mm -hmm. for some Damn. reason, for reasons unknown. And so For reasons unknown. <laughs> so they um so that's what, what's in this room. Also, there's the um chimney, and underneath is a big pot of boiling water. Um there's some there's like a little area for pieces of uh firewood. Um there's a like a little sitting at uh, well, what would have been um like assuming there's sitting area, like a there's a table. And then two chairs that have been um, torn to pieces. Uh, there's also like various, you know, keepsakes and things they have hanging around. And then there's a hallway that leads into the rest of the house. <laughs> um, but you only so, see so the they have tables right and chairs. These ungrateful <laughs> sods. When I was a boy, my brothers and sisters would take turns pretending to be furniture so that our father would have something to rest upon after a hard day <laughs> in the mine. Ungrateful <laughs> <laughs> sods. Ungrateful sods. You're older than they are, aren't you? Isn't he? Is it? Uh, is that right? Oh, oh uh, yeah, by far. Kevin. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So okay, yeah. yeah um, really, what we asked for was planks, isn't it? So I'm now I'm inside, and there's some there's some laying all over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. <laughs> Not only do they have planks, that's what they've got keepsakes. I. That's not what I asked for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking Mark, one of those. Me. I'm taking a piece oh. of that wood off the floor. Yeah, so, one, yeah, you, one that, you, especially one that would be useful as a club. Um. Yeah, you can actually <laughs> take uh in the sitting area where they had the chairs that they had dismantled. You can actually mm -hmm. take one of the legs. Um. It's got yeah. Uh. It's got some nails sticking out. So. Perfect. Uh, um. I'm taking that. And that um, a club is, I think, a D6, but let me look real quick. Club, yep, D6. So nice. you can add that to your inventory. Um, the, uh, yeah, the potato kid is just whipping the shit out of the guy. Right? The guy doesn't even like, he needs to come in, but he doesn't try to stop you taking the plank or I mean take, taking the chair leg. He's just trying to defend himself. He's like sw swinging at the potato kid, and the potato kid's just laughing <laughs> away. <laughs> um, Fartilda, what are you going to do? Um, I want to see if I can find the kitchen. Okay. Um. So, as you enter the room, there are only two passages. It's a pretty, you know, pretty small house, but um, there is to the left an area that probably is. You can see as the door is open there, you can see um, some onions on a counter. So 
you assume that that's the kitchen because you know it would be weird if there was a counter in any other room with onions on it probably but then again i don't know what medieval people did but it's hard to say you haven't been to my house for a while what's that you haven't been to my house for good luck (laughs) (laughs) i have onions all over the place Actually, I can see that. Like, just in case. I, I kind of want to live in. A, I kind of want to live in a house with just onions galore, just onions everywhere. You know, for a snack. Oh, there's an onion on the yeah. table. Is Perfect. A bowl? It's just a, a bowl of onions, please. I love an onion. <laughs> onion and garlic. Did I put anyway, onions on my lots of stuff? What we used to call them. <laughs> what What did you say? Brown apples is what we used to call them. So, are you coming in the house too? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So you go in the. Everybody's in the house. Uh, Cor- or Corey, wait, did, you came in, didn't you? Yes, I'm going to. Uh... I want to get the potato kit off the old man, and I want to get. The potato kit? Yeah, I'm okay. going to stop it. I got it, and I want to get the. <laughs> The man and the woman into like a closet and shut them in it. Okay, well, make a strength <laughs> test to pull the potato kid off of them, or you can, or you can try to talk him out of going after him. One or the other. Hmm. Both are going to be difficult. <clears throat> right. What'd you get? You got a nine. <laughs> well, which one were you attempting to do? Just kind of want to just. Push a kid away and take the old man. Okay, so you you push the kid. The kid stops whipping the old man. He goes, what the fuck do you want? <laughs> and See, I'm you, gonna... should have, uh, you should have omens you can use, too. Oh, that's right, I do. Have... I just got that shit dies, and I can't find my other one. D3 omens. Thirteen. Okay, so that's you forcing him off of the other guy? Yeah. Okay, so you push him away from him. And he looks very angry. But you do manage to push him away from the from the man um, who starts backing away towards the kitchen where Fartilda, are you going into the kitchen? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you go in uh, you see a table. Uh, there are still pieces of wood in here, nails, hammers. Um, there's uh, a bowl of onions. Um, there is a pantry with some dried meats and bread and some cheese, things of that nature. I'm going to go for some cheese, steal some cheese. Okay. Um, roll a d4. Uh, four. Four. So you have four slices of cheese. Ooh. It's I want... very aromatic. It's a very aromatic cheese. It smells good. I love a strong cheese. Mm-hmm. I like my cheese the way I like my men. Strong and smelly. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, anyway, so you got some cheese. Um, the uh, Pat, Kevin, what are you doing? I know you're you're really uh, giving them a hard time about all these planks and lack of health insurance. <laughs> now that I've got your attention, have you heard about the benefits of full term life insurance? <laughs> what if, for example, somebody broke into your home and smashed things up? What would you do? <laughs> You hear a door open and you can see to your right uh, the hallway that leads to presumably their bedroom. And you see the woman, uh, it, it's kind of dimly lit, um, but you see her coming in the, down the hallway with something in her hand. What if, for example, a small potato shaped child set their place on fire? Have you considered fire insurance? <laughs> Make an agility test. 15, 16, 18. Okay. So she says, get back. And she starts swinging at you with um, 
Yeah. What look it looks to be like an antique sword. It's very old and rusty. What if you got stabbed, for example, next to her? Go for it. Roll a strength test. Oh my god. What if you got stabbed, for example? <laughs> uh, mint shiv is DR10, and I oh, got yeah. a yes, the shiv is 16. DR10. <clears throat> oh hell yeah d4 plus one buddy so there's four plus five. Oh shit and uh there's a one in was it four chance or six chance that she goes into a uh, sugar do six do i roll that or do you roll that you can roll d6 All right. yeah so i need to roll a one and i did <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> no you stabbed this woman with a sharpened candy cane and she's so surprised <laughs> uh, you stab her in the gut and you pull it away and she's standing there clutching her stomach she drops the old sword and her eyes roll back and she falls to the ground and she's just unconscious and she's like kind of shaking <laughs> a little bit and she's sweating profusely she well, looks like that's it. your sword now yeah, so I take the sword I give her a business card and say, what do you wake up? Remember, Carl Middleton, he's your man. <laughs> uh, by the way, so the sword, it, it's very rusty, and normally it would um, deal a D6, but it's so rusted and dented, it deals a D4. However, because of all the rust, there's a one in six chance that it kills an, a target outright with super tetanus. Fuck yeah. <clears throat> That's the worst kind of tetanus, you know. It was super tetanus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The 12 monkeys version of tetanus. What? What? The 12 monkeys version of tetanus. Oh, 12, 12 monkeys, monkeys like... Like the movie, 12 monkeys. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah, I... I'm... <laughs> I didn't understand what you said at first. Me either. I heard, well, monkeys burn the tits. You mean like like Corey's pet monkey? Is that what we're talking about? That's what I yeah. do. <laughs> you get a anyway. with me. I'm Carl Middleton. I said what I said. Of course. You with Corey, your monkey is um, it's in the room and it's like picking up uh, a hammer and it's just slamming it on the floor repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. it'll just like it'll just look at everyone and it'll like peel back its lips and show its teeth and it'll hammer the ground and then it'll just <laughs> like relax and then if someone like moves it just does it again but it doesn't say anybody, just, good job just <laughs> <laughs> can i well done. He, looks like, he has like a little hat that he like takes off and puts back on. Yeah. Can I try to hold hide at this old man again? Because <laughs> I feel like he needs any of this business going on. Um, well, I don't know if you can try, but he, he's very upset because his wife just got stabbed. Um so so everyone oh not everyone, mm -hmm. sorry. So um Corey and and Kevin, you both need to make um, an agility test. Or actually, that's not what I meant. Hang on, sorry, I fucked that all up. No, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Take it back. Okay, what I meant was one of you. I, I, my brain is fried. Let me. Uh, one of you is going to get attacked by the man. Okay. So, odds it's Kevin, evens it's Corey. It is odds. Um, so. Kevin, the man swings his frying pan at you in a rage as it, as you just stabbed his wife. Yes. I got a dirty 20. Okay. <laughs> you cannot contain Carl Middleton. <laughs> so you, he swings at you and you... So it's like with my briefcase. It's yeah, not the first time someone said stabbing the back. It's so it's what they did at the firm. Amazing to everyone seeing like how unbelievably quick this old man is. <laughs> like he's just deflecting it with his briefcase or just dancing out of the way, basically. 
He's like, I don't. If anyone's seen um, Invincible, he's like, I'm imagining he's like uh, Doc Seismic, who is this. Oh yeah. Uh, this like mad scientist who like he creates shockwaves, but he's like really good. At, like he's old, but he's like really good at like dancing nimbly out of the way. And in the first episode he's in, um, he's like saying all this stuff. He's like to this uh, female superhero. He's like, you know, he he's like, you should be working with me because look at the costume they make you wear. You know, that's pandering to gender roles. And she's like, I created this. <laughs> oh costume. yeah, and like, she was no. like, I designed this costume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then uh, she uh, says uh, on Thursday, I got the Tai Chi for arthritis. Really helps you limber up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the whole reason why he they, the, what they reveal is the reason he's able to dodge the attack is because he had a minor in African dance. So that's why he apparently that's the reason given, I guess. It's where it's implied that he's just so good at dodging out of the way because he, he, he's just quick. He's <laughs> His minor was in was in African dance when he was in um, college, so well, you I, I still college. get all that stuff and like practice and like be good yeah. and just for sure. No matter yeah. do it. Agile seniors. Um, okay, so uh, what's everyone going to do? So I I know Corey, you tried to um, get the man out of there, but he's very angry and he's attacking everyone. Um. The potato kid tries to attack him again. Um, he starts whacking him with the switch. Uh, and the guy's trying to defend himself, but he trips and falls down. And the potato kid just wailing on him with the switch. <laughs> At this point, because I was going to try to like save the dude and his wife. But now that he's seen that, that we're all doing this, I was going to try to clock him in the head and get him out of his misery. Okay. <laughs> so make an attack roll. It's a strength test. Um, but since he's on the ground, you just get a 10 or higher. 12. Okay, so roll a d4. Four. All right. So <laughs> <Yeah>. you <laughs> you crack the guy in the face, Thump. <laughs> and you you see his you hit him in the face. You see his nose just twist like that, and he goes he screams and covers his face. And he's rolled over on his side. He rolls into a fetal position and just bleeding on on the ground. He's like shaking and crying. Oh my gosh, dude. Um, <laughs> home invasion episode. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> and not in a fun way like Home Alone. No, this is more of a oh, what's that one? Strangers? With the rich kids. Final and I, definitely not. <laughs> I love that. I don't know why I was thinking of that. This is a Christmas episode. What the fuck? But oh, funny game. Oh yeah, order- funny game. I, I hated that fucking movie. Yeah. Just because, like, oh, since, oh, nice. like, it's like for some reason. Okay, so there's a whole act. I'm not going to go into detail, but it's a whole movie mm. where everything that's happened in it is pretty realistic. And then at one part, one of the bad guys gets killed, and the other guy pulls out a remote control and rewinds the scene and then makes that not happen. And. Yeah. <laughs> that's fucking <laughs> stupid. I hated that so much. <laughs> that was the American one. There's apparently like a UK, like a different version of one where it's just like straight up, just like brutal kind of thing. Is it a video nasty? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's what they call anyway, the movies that are like ban- they're on the video nasty list that were like banned because oh, even, oh, sure. even though even though that um even though. They are just a bit as big of perverts as we are over here. They are very, they used to be very like hard nosed about, mm, yeah, films, you know. Anyway, that's that's the most British sounding thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Video I, nasty, yeah. But... yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway. real quick, apparently, 
The opening scene of Terrifier 3 was so fucking gnarly that every Hollywood, like, big producer, whatever they had for it, just completely cut out of it instantly. Nice. I, I, I saw that. Which only intrigues me more, of course. I know. And it's still going to be in theaters, and we're going to go see it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if everything ha- hadn't happened with my car, we could have gone to go see it I know. the day after fucking Halloween. But anyway, uh, sorry, my game pig is making weird noises. He's just drinking very loudly. Anyway, um, all right, so... You whacked a, a man in the face, and he's on the ground, and he's hurt. What are we going to do? <laughs> and his wife is in a diabetic coma. Oh, fuck. Ooh, I would just leave him here, whoa, honestly. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> if she had been properly insured, she wouldn't have had to worry about this. She would have been covered. <laughs> Just call the man in the morning just, when she wakes up. The man <laughs> just just cower. He just lays there cowering on the floor. I'm going to very deliberately step over him so that <laughs> as I'm walking out and just sort of go sit on the porch and eat some jerky. Okay. <laughs> Where, are there when, any? Uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Well, I say when you step over. Oh, him, I'm not, I should check on the. I sh- Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go check on that flower kid. The flower child. Um, you go outside and see he's he's um, stopped crying, <clears throat> but he's kind of going <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like kind of crying like that and wipe, he's trying to settle down. He's rubbing his eyes. Um, but his skin, <laughs> like you can see his, the side of his, his jaw is like bubbled up where he just got fucking mm. smoked uh, by that. Him. I hand him a uh, toffee heart and say, suck it up, kid. (laughs) Okay. So he he grabs it and he just gobbles it up. And he, it's so sticky. It's all over his face. But you see him like look a lot, like you see some color return to his cheeks and stuff. And he looks like he's feeling better. Nobody cares about your feelings. (laughs) He, 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 He just shrugs and stands up and wipes his face. He's got like candy and snot. Never let him see you cry, kid. Never let him face. see you beat in pain. <laughs> First left <Yeah>. of business. <laughs> he just like looks at the ground and walks off. And I just clap my hand on his shoulder as he walks and let him do yeah. whatever he wants. Yeah, to he do. just starts walking. To- he starts walking towards another group of kids. Um, <laughs> that potato kid is just still wailing on that guy, like. He's not even trying to take anything from him. He's just whipping him. Whip like the guy's just curled up, just tr- just taking it, and his the hide's getting lashed off of his hands and everything. Fucking hell! All right, honey, I think that'll do to the potato kid. Yeah, he stops and looks at looks at you. He's like breathing heavily, and his eyes are like crazy. And uh, yeah, you okay? He reaches down <laughs> and touches the guy and. Like he has a little pouch on his belt loop, and when when he touches the pouch, the guy reaches towards it, and the potato kid lashes his finger, and he pulls it back, and you can see the hide just peel back. You can see the bone of his knuckle, and the kid takes the pouch of. You can hear it's got silver in it, and he just goes running out the door. <laughs> okay. Is the diabetic woman type one or type two? Lick the blood to find out. <laughs> Roll a D2. <laughs> I roll a 20. And I got a 7. <clears throat> what are you rolling for? I, you said you're rolling. Type two diabetes. Sugar, so too many, or all not one. I just meant roll a D2 to see what if she's type 1 or type 2 diabetic. Right, so we rolled it well, on, so it would be type 1. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, which is type 1. But what was the what was the seven for? You asked him to roll. roll Twenty. Oh, you were rolling two like different. Like a one instead or of, two. Instead of, doing, roll instead of rolling, rolling it and doing odds or evens, you rolled two literal different. Okay, I see. I see what you're saying. No, he, he I just rolled a twenty to determine that. 
Oh, I thought he got a 20 and then also a 7. No. Oh, he means like a 20. 20. Roll it. <laughs> We're going to have to edit all this out because I'm going to look like the biggest dumbass who ever lived <laughs> in this episode. Brought to you by Dog Salt. Compact <laughs> <laughs> case of salt brain. Do I need mm. to give her sugar or not? You don't have that kind of knowledge, but... <laughs> We're children. Can... <laughs> yeah, but, it, but you can, you know, you can either, like, roll a presence test to try and see, you know, to make a medical diagnosis, an, an un, uneducated <laughs> medical diagnosis, um, but awesome. the DR is going to be pretty, pretty I mean, high. at bare minimum, you could remove the shift. Yeah, did you just leave it in her? You just left I, it in her? I, I assume it was a one-time use item, yeah? <laughs> no, it, it it lasts for an hour and before it becomes before it becomes stale and um, oh like whatever it's, it's still in the wound. I marked it okay. up my list. Okay, <laughs> already. So yeah. it, it it shatters on a fumble. Like if you fumble with it, it'll break. Um, and then, but it lasts, I think, for like an hour. And but after an hour, it like just, just becomes brittle and stale and falls apart. It, it's well, I was. Initially, going to try to save these people mm -hmm. because I felt that this was unnecessary, but it's too far gone. We can't do anything about it. I'm going to bash him with her and put her out of her misery. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you don't have to roll for that because she is, you know, is in no way able to defend herself. So if you kill her, her husband is very upset. Her husband is very, very upset. Um, he tries to get up. Um, he's like grabbing a hole in the wall and pulling himself up. And he turns towards you and rushes for forward towards you, Corey, to try and strangle you. Oh shit! I, no, I guess defense. I can't. I guess I probably can't see that, can I? Mm -mm. So Corey, <laughs> <Like, laughs> no, it'd just be gravy and fertility at this point. Can yeah. I intercept since I'm invisible? Yes, you can. All right. I like to intercept going for the throat with my knife. Okay. That's an eight, but I only got DR6, right? Yeah, so you make it. Okay. <laughs> he rushes forward. You can see just the murder in his eyes and his, his tear-swelled eyes, and he's trying to reach out towards towards Corey, just grab him around the neck uh, and you stab him, so roll for damage. Uh, three damage. Okay. So you you go for his neck, but as he's like moving forward, um, you kind of stab upward, it goes like up against his chin and slides up into his eye and you pull your knife down and just blood just goes everywhere and he like screams and staggers around and then he falls down and just twitches a little bit. And, and I'd like to think that. as soon as the blood gets spilled and like touches me, that's when I become visible again. Yes. Slowly yes. becoming visible as the blood drips down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Very caring. Yeah. Well, actually, I would say... I don't, Actually, yeah, no, wait, because he didn't have, he was already previously damaged anyway, so yes, that would have killed him anyway, so, no, you do actually stab him right in the fucking throat as he's, yeah, and all the wa all the blood, you know, washes over you, and, yeah, that's very cool. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. now they're both dead. All right, let's <laughs> check the bodies. Okay. Um, roll... Hang on a sec. D66. Or two D6s. In case anyone didn't, you know. 25. 45? Uh, 25. 25, okay. Um, so whose pocket are you picking? Uh, probably that guy since I'm the closest. 
Okay. So you reach down to his pocket and there's this like note folded up. Um, the paper feels kind of old and, and gritty. Um, it's like partially, like part of it's like starting to come apart. Like, you know, it's, it's gone very, uh, it, it's like yellowish, but it's very fragile. Um, but if you unfold it, uh, there are all these like crazy, like ramblings written down. Make a DR12 presence test. With... Uh, 12. Okay. Or, well, hold on a second. That... Never mind. I rolled a D12. Oh, yeah. It's roll, a, yeah, roll a D20 and then and then tell me what you get. Yeah, I wish I would have kept the D12 result. Um, wait, wait, wait. Six. You rolled a 12 on a D12? That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> Did you roll a six? Yeah. Oh. Okay, well, don't forget you have omens also. I do, but I only have the one of them. Okay. All right, so you read this, and it's the most first fucked up shit you've ever read in your entire life. And it's like leaving you, like, you just feel such an intense, like, feeling of just hopelessness and, like, and just how everything is just rotting at, as we speak. And it's all the hopelessness of it all. Like you, you lose one presence uh, permanently from confusion. It says. Oh my god! Oh, wow. Okay. I'm sorry. I hate to do that to you, but that's just well, that's mad manifesto. That's what this says. Hey, sometimes when you loot a body, sometimes bad things happen. Yeah. <laughs> But it, but it leaves you very shook. Like you're just like, oh my god, this is. You guys Holy shit! <laughs> so who so who is uh? Does anyone want to loot the loot the <laughs> yeah. I'm out. I'm outside at this uh, point. I I am gonna look around outside though. Um, you see other kids running to porches, and people are giving them candies and stuff. Uh, the Good. house next to you. Um. They're giving out some sort of like salted pork. Nice salted Little pork. Salted mm. pork. <laughs> I love that salted pork. Um, did you say you are looting the wife? I will. Okay, so roll um two d six. I almost brought my d sixty six with me tonight. <laughs> Oh man, I really want to get one. I got eight. Oh, don't combine them. What is the? Uh, just tell me what the first. Uh, tell me what the first roll was. Two digits. Second oh, yeah. Well, four and four. So. 44. The forty-four. Okay. Um. So. You reach inside. She has like a little pouch that she's wearing, uh, or a little satchel, and you find uh, a mask, a death mask of says what of one of the PCs. Um, you've never seen any of any of the other people that are in your group right now, but you notice that it looks it's a, a death mask of you, or it's mm -hmm. like. Like your death mask face. from, from yes, yeah, like your own face before you. <clears throat> oh my god! You're just, you're just wondering why does this woman have this? <laughs> she probably you realize when you sizzle. slept when you slept covered your face in a layer of petroleum jelly and then plaster and then peeled it off. You well, like you realize that there's a lot about. Um, your death that you don't remember. Like, you don't, there are a lot of details you don't recall. Um, she broke into your grave. Slathered your face with petroleum jelly. And that's plaster all there. That's disrespectful. Well, I'm going to take it. <laughs> okay. So, Put add, it on. <laughs> on, the, on the skull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I'm going to take off my like school costume and just put that on. Okay. You feel just you feel really good. You feel strangely complete. Um but it causes you to feel you feel like a nice like emotion wash over you at sort of a contentment, but it also makes you feel like your knees almost buckle all of a sudden. Like you feel kind of like you felt this wave of, of euphoria, then all of a sudden it felt like the wind got knocked out of you. Okay. Very weird. But now add that to your inventory though, that you have a face mask of your own face. Um, so anyway, what's everyone else doing? The monkey walks, walks outside, by the way, through the open door, and it's it's carrying around the hammer that it took from the house. <laughs> um, I I think we should go to the next house, get some salted pork. I do have a lot of business cards to hand out still. Yeah. Young. So you guys are standing in line. There are a bunch of kids there. They're getting the salted pork. Um, and just as the four of you are uh, getting ready to take your turn, you see that they only have two slices of salted pork left on the plate. And they both look uh -oh. nervous. <laughs> Uh-oh. And you can see, um, like, a child looking through the window. A child, huh? A child, a child that's too young, typically seen as too young to go... Uh, too young to go trick-or-treating. Trick-or-treating, okay. yes. Okay. Okay. What are we, like, eight or nine? Yeah, somewhere between then. Or, or that's what I was imagining. Or in some cases. Or possibly 87. Yeah, I, yes. I, was imagining, <laughs> I was imagining, like, eight or nine, like... Yeah. yeah, that's what Pretty I figured. Young. Pretty young, but this kid <clears throat> is like younger than younger than that. Yeah, right? younger than us. Okay. Do what? So, so they both are standing there, and the the plate like they're shaking. They've only got two pieces of of pork left, and there are four of you. Uh, the husband says, "Wait, just wait a moment. I'll I'll go inside and see if there's something else I can find." I want to say we can split them between the four of us. While we're waiting, have you heard about the benefits of full-term life insurance? Like, what? I, I don't... Life insurance, what is that? It is a means of preserving your life. For example, what if something happened to your husband when he's in the kitchen? Who would look after you while he's gone? She's like, uh, uh, I would go live with my sister. She lives in shale. Has she heard about the fit benefits of full-time life insurance? Well, <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. Here's my card. Car Milton, he's your man. Call me. The husband comes back <clears throat> and he has this jar of very aged apples and uh some sort of fluid. Um he says, this is this is all I could find. Uh I was saving this for a special occasion, but you can have it if you want. Is it liquor? Yeah. I was going to say, this is alcohol, isn't it? Yeah. Fuck yeah, we want it. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> okay, so add a jar of hooch. Someone add a jar of hooch to their inventory. I'll um, take it. Okay. And there are... Uh, there are a D6 worth of uses. Nice. So he give, they give you that and they thank you for accepting it and then they go inside. Um, and uh, other kids are running around. There's a kid um, holding a holding a chicken under his arm and he's just screaming and he's covered in mud and he's <laughs> and he's just he's, he's, he's got a tree branch and he's just swinging it he's smacking the window the windows of the shop with it 
just breaking <laughs> breaking some of the windows and others he's just like you know funking up funking it up against some of the costumes that people have are like very like creepy and seem supernatural others just look like lame as shit like the potato kid um the kid with the stick he looks like he's supposed to be some sort of it's hard to tell worm shaped creature um you can't really tell he's, he's got like some sort of weird like tubular body with like a tail but it's made out of like patchwork um it's like like part of its cloth and part of it's like a weird leather um but anyway the other kids are just wearing some of them. You, you swear that running amongst the kids, you just see a straight up goblin that doesn't even have a cop, costume on at all. <laughs> but it's just running along with the kids, and the kids don't even like you know. They don't care. The goblin's got like a. He's got like a a back. Seems yeah. legit. Yeah. Um, there's also a, like there are also two kids that are taking a piss in this trough that's in front of like one of the. Um, <laughs> oh. One of the buildings, <laughs> just pissing in it. <laughs> it's a valuable Probably. commodity. In my day, we saved that to use for the tanning. <laughs> uh, a guard approaches you to or you four and says, "Hey, get out of here, you little bastards! You already got what you wanted. Go on, go on to a different part of the town." Yeah, says, we got. Go on we to the south end. We're moving on. Do we hurt anything? Are we? Are we? Are you looking for like? Are you? Are, do you want to fight? <laughs> he he <laughs> considered the benefits of full term life insurance. He looks really mad. He looks really mad, but he's also nervous because he knows there are a lot more of you guys than there are of him. So he's like, yeah. He said, like, "Just, just keep it moving." Please. I'm just gonna sort of like hold my my newly my new club made of whatever made of a chair and just sort of yeah. uh sl i'm gonna i'm gonna walk really slow and watch him as i do it <laughs> but continue on at doing what i was already doing before he so rudely interrupted me <laughs> yeah he's, he's got like a truck like a truncheon um and he's got a shield um but he yeah he he is you know in decent shape and everything but he does not want to have to deal with multiple Homicidal children. Yeah. Especially when we can just yell out, this guard is full of candy. <laughs> <laughs> Tear him open, he's full of candy. <laughs> Pinata man. He, yeah, he looks he looks really nervous and he's just kind of standing waiting for you guys to go on down to the next section of houses. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Actually, no, I I am going to uh, try to convince the children that he is full of candy. <laughs> <laughs> He's offending me. Okay, make a present uh, with, so, with, uh, with your devil mask. That's yeah, uh, reduced by two. So, children, I do believe he is indeed full of candy. <laughs> <laughs> you that is a nineteen. Well, minus one eighteen. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> So roll uh roll a d6, Kevin. That is a three. Three. So three children hear you say that are like nearby hear you say that, and they rush over to the guard and they just jump on him and start tearing at him. He's like swinging it, he's like trying to swing his club at him, but like one of the kids has like grabbed a hold of his arm, is just like biting into his forearm. And like they tackle him to the ground and just start tearing him up. I walk past and put my card into his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> you slide it in there as the kids are just going fair a lot. Like you see that they have like they've he's already like severely injured and they've managed to like tear away part of his like leather armor and they're just stabbing and clawing at his flesh, like as if he literally were <laughs> full of candy. <laughs> And they're, you see that they're in such a they're in such a frenzy that they like are just eating his flesh willingly and pretending it's candy. You well, guys, should never interfere with a man's work, young man. We Remember should get out that. of here before they don't find any candy in there. Yeah, oh, find <laughs> yeah I think such we just carry on. They will right? find treats. Such delicious delicacies <laughs> will they find inside him. <laughs> so you guys walk over to the next house. 
and uh, the, the there's just an older woman, and she's she doesn't seem all that nervous. She's got like a big um, bowl full of this looks like an assortment of like nuts and dried fruits and things like that. Ooh, now we're talking. Yeah. So um, the kids reach in and they take some candy or, or, or some fruit and nuts and stuff. And she just doesn't say anything. She, she just kind of stares forward as everybody takes the turn. Um, so everybody okay. add fruits and nuts, serving of yeah, fruits and nuts. I need a moment to catch my breath. So I'm just going to hand her my card and then take some fruits and nuts. Okay. That was she takes strenuous. the card. Doesn't, she doesn't respond to you, but she... She takes the card, looks at it, and then her brow kind of crinkles slightly, and then she just puts it under her arm. Um, and uh, and then the other kids are kind of pushing, you know, waiting for you to get the hell out of their way so they can get more candy. Um, but the lady, she just, I don't know, she's the only person that doesn't seem... Like it's almost like she's just so used. She's older, um, and you know she she's older, but she's actually a little younger than you, Kevin. Um, but she, yeah, she's, she's a woman who she, knows the benefits of full time life insurance. He, That's why she feels comfortable through, in her station in life right now. She's been through a lot of these uh, these uh, holiday events. Or so holiday yeah. events. So anyway, are you guys, you guys just move on to the next house? Um, and uh, you see four kids running away from the porch as you hear uh, a woman yell, tear them up, tear them up. And you see two good-sized dogs come tearing across the porch. Oh, man. Snapping nice. at the dog. <laughs> Roll initiative. Fuck uh, yeah! Are you guys okay? Doing, before I... um, are you guys doing the t the typical odds? I think we went evens last time. It actually worked out. Yeah. So you want to do evens? Okay. So somebody roll then. One person roll. Who's the I got eight. Eight. Okay. All right. Hey, so guys, evens. So you guys can go first. Um, Corey, uh, at the sight of the dogs, your monkey runs up your body and is on your shoulders. Screeching, holding it's holding on to your shoulders with its feet, and it's just got one hand on your head, and the other one it's like screaming and swinging the hammer around like this. <laughs> nice. So it's very worked up. Okay. But the two dogs come charging towards you guys, but you guys get to act first. What kind of dogs? Um, one is a large, shaggy-looking, uh, dark brown dog. The other one is skinnier and has a bob tail, um, and, uh, sort of long, or, like, um, sagging jowls. Okay. I, uh, oh, I want to let them come at me, and then I want to try to, like, you know, step aside and let him run past. Okay, so... So that he thinks he's got me, and then, you know, I don't know, this, yeah. this might be a bad idea, but so, <laughs> so, I don't know how to fight a dog, so I'm just yeah. gonna... And I'm gonna try to hit him as he's, you know... Oh, you are gonna try and hit him as he runs by? Yeah. Don't uh, do that. Do the best thing for an aggressive dog is to just look away from him and then just put your hands down and relax. You're gonna do that. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try to do some, I was gonna then try to do never some mind trickery. about the hitting. I am gonna let him go past me. See what happens. <laughs> I'm gonna take my pork chop thing, and then try to do like he's coming at me, but when he tries to bite, shove the pork chop in the mouth, and kind of spit. <laughs> okay. All right. So, there you so go. make an agility <laughs> test. Okay. Uh, 12. Well, okay. hold on. 13 is my ability. Okay. Thing. So the dog rushes up towards you and gets ready to, it's actually just getting ready to like bark at you, but you shove the piece of meat in, in his mouth and he stops and kind of slides across the ground. 
and just starts chewing and and just drops his head and drops the meat out of his mouth and looks at it for a second and then he just starts eating it. Nice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's how you deal uh, with an aggressive dog. dog. <laughs> running past Evan, what are you going to do? Oh, I was going to say, uh, use my uh, devil powers. Who's a good boy? And pull up the, oh, okay. take the jerky and throw it back into the house at the owner. Oh. Okay. All right. Do that. Devil powers united. So that'll be 60 minus 15. 15 and okay. then minus two or whatever it is. So you, you show the dog the jerky and it like, it like, it, Looked like it was running, getting ready to run towards Evan, but as soon as you did that and called out to it, it stops and it sees what you got and it's wet, it's like wagging its tail. You throw it and it goes barreling into the house. The guy's like trying to shut the door, but the dog like slams through and knocks it open and rushes it. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't attack the owner, but it like bowls her over. Yeah. <laughs> and the other dog is just eating that piece of meat. It doesn't even, it's, it, it's, it, like went from aggressive to like not it's like completely chill just shaking nice it's bobbed, it's shaking its ass and its tails bobbed and it's just eating that piece of meat <laughs> <All right. laughs> no dogs that were injured in the making of this episode thank god <laughs> <Not> anyway <laughs> we I know will kill we will <laughs> kill so many innocent people I but, like, have <laughs> but dogs no <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not Maybe maybe the people that live here because they tried to sick dogs on us. They just tried to injure their dogs by attacking us with their dogs. And yeah. I'm pretty sure they don't have pet insurance, so I, I feel obligated to go discuss it. The, we should go up to the door. Side. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the door is ajar because the dog yeah. went barreling through there. We are going to yeah. just walk on in like we own the place. Okay, so you guys walk in, and there is a large woman, um, very stocky. She stands up after the dog had like knocked her down, and she sees you. She sees you guys walk in, and uh, she grabs a log um, from the fireplace, and like has it ready to fight back. She says, "Get out of my fucking house!" I wouldn't do that if I were you, honey. She, she <laughs> is going to swing at you, make an agility. <laughs> agility, unless okay. Convince, unless you want to try to convince no, her to. No, I'm cool with agility. Reality. I'm cool with this. <laughs> uh, agility is my wow. only good skill, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, that is. Oh no, I thought it was a natural one. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is a. Uh, seventeen. Okay. I was so I was looking. Go ahead. Anyway, yeah, I was looking at the fucking. It was like I was looking at the wrong end, and it was tilted. Oh yeah. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, natural one. No, I was wrong. No, that would suck. Okay, so you so yeah, so she swings at you, and you just completely sidestep it, and the log goes wide. Um, and the dog is just. It's in the room and it's just eating that piece of jerky. It's just having a hard time chewing it because it's so fucking tough. <laughs> I'm going to respond by swinging my uh, club at her. Go for it. I'm a. Uh, that is a. That's a nine. Nine. To hit? Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's a miss, yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you. Swing at her, and uh, the dog like is moving. It's like kind of running around, and it like bumps into her as it's like just mm -hmm. playing with the piece of meat and chewing it up. And so she like stumbles out of the way just as you swing the club at her, and you miss. Um, <laughs> she tries. I'm gonna say to... that was a warning. <laughs> <laughs> she she tries to. Um, it, are you the only one that's in the house? Are you? The only oh, one I, I came in as well. Demon? Oh. Yeah. Okay, so you two are in the house. Anybody else? Are you guys? The rest of you, I think, are outside, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you're dealing with the dog. You were, guys were, yeah, yeah. Doing, all, doing all that. So so the woman tries to shut the door. She tries to make, um, she, so she tries to rush forward 
and shut the door and shut you guys in there with her. Um, so mm. what? So are you guys going to? Oh, you can have before if you want. Okay. Okay. Which I would advise. Yeah, I'm. Sh- I'm, look at I'm her probably and say, just. Ha- Unless you're comfortable with the situation, though, I don't know. No, I was gonna look at her and say, uh, "Fires in the home cause property damage more often than you think." For example, what would happen if you dropped that log on yourself right now? (laughs) (laughs) That is. Oh, okay. Are you gonna do? Are you doing like a thing? Yeah, there you go. He's trying to convince her to drop the log. Right, so that's just a nine, but it's minus two, if that helps. If that helps. No, it doesn't. <laughs> nine is... minus two? Okay, no, no, so... it's, the DR is minus two. Oh. I oh, rolled yeah. a nine, but the DR is minus two. So you rolled an 11, right. basically. Yeah. Is yeah. basically what that means, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, he just says, what the fuck are you talking about? And so... Uh, <laughs> I am going to go over to the fireplace where oh, she got shit. that log. Hang on, I'm going to omen that nonsense. I want her to go oh, off. Yeah, I, want her to ca- I want her to catch on fire. I'm disappointed. Well, the, lo- the log's not on fire. It was just by the fireplace. It's it's not actually on fire. Oh, oh okay. Log. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Wait, just okay. a, it's is there, a log. Okay. Let's, uh, let's put it this way. Is there a log on the fire that is close enough or whatever? That if I were to grab it, I could pull it out and it would be on fire. Yes. Based on what I can see, can I see something? Can I make that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Okay. That is what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to drop it on the floor. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> Near a so chair or something. <laughs> make an agility test to pull it out without burning yourself, though. Unless you don't care about. Unless you don't care about being burned. Um. You know what. I, well, I rolled a, I rolled a, um, nine, ten, let's say an eleven anyway, but I, I'm a less worried about being burned than, and I, I'm a lot more worried about get this house on fire. That's more important. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so take one point, of, take one point of damage from burning. I your accept hand. this. Not um, bad. <laughs> but you do successfully. This. You drag the flaming log into the floor. <laughs> Uh, she, but since neither one of you attacked her or or really did much to try to stop her, yeah. she does slam the door shut. She um, locks it, and which she actually doesn't. She has like a obviously like a key. Or no, wait, that doesn't make any sense. You're right. inside. Yeah, she, it would yeah, be more. It would be lock. like a wood lock, probably like a bar, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like that. So she yeah. puts the bar on the door and locks it, so no one can come in from outside. And she turns and faces you both with the log in her hand. Uh, then she whistles. The dog. Oh gosh, uh, there's some more up. dogs. <laughs> the look. The dog looks. Oh, the dog was eating the jerky. It finally swallowed it, and it looks up and it growls at you both. Okay. And the dog I, uh... and the woman are both just eyeing you guys. Like, okay. And she's by the door, so like she's between you guys and that door. If you tried to get out that way, yeah. I guess say yeah, Kevin. I think it, if you, there should be plenty, of, like you should probably have a. I'm trying not to. Oh yeah, somebody said, "Have you considered what would happen if your dog turned on you?" Devil power. Oh, you <laughs> Devil power. <laughs> And that's a I'm 15. going to. That's a fifteen. With the yeah, fifteen. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> so okay. Now, this is kind of a difficult thing because it's also supposed to be sort of like, I don't know. I feel like that would be so hard to get the dog to do that. But then again, you did roll really high. And I did just feed. Uh, but he did feed the dog, and the dog can like point. sort of understand human talk. Not that's, really, that's but a like a point. little bit, they can, you know, well, to a degree. We'll split, the, we'll split the difference. So it doesn't so have to like ball that, or it just has to turn it on. Well, listen. Well, listen. So here's what happens. So you you do that, and the dog like looks at you, and it looks at her, and it looks at you, and like where it was growling, it stopped growling, and she's like trying, she's like yelling at, it, telling it to attack you, but it's just. <laughs> It just sits down and walk. It just sits down and whines. 
Yeah, there you go. So I'm just going to laugh at this and get another log if uh, if she doesn't respond to that. She's very angry, so she, sw- she swings at Kevin with her club, <laughs> with her log. Oh, okay. So oh, okay. Right. <laughs> 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay. Yes. So she swings at this supernaturally quick <laughs> old man. Who just, he swings at him. She swings at him and he just steps up. He dodges, deflects it with his briefcase. Um, she, <laughs> even though the house is on fire, she is just like, she's not, I mean, it's not catching like super quick, but it's gradually, you know, but she is just trying to fuck you guys up. And Evan, you're just dragging logs into the fire. And what do you do when your home security Based on system him being notably failed you? Br- liar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to light this house on fire, and I'm gonna. Then we should dive out the window or something. Uh, by the uh, way, take another point of damage if you're just if you're pulling the log out. Oh right, yeah. I should. Yeah. I I'll do an agility test this time too. Okay. Okay. Um, hold on. What is that? Oh, that isn't that one this time. Oh no! You want to roll an omen? Okay, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use an omen. Use an omen, use an omen. <laughs> instead of, instead of dying. <laughs> yeah. Good idea. <laughs> um okay well it's it's a three if uh five so i think i took a point another point of damage you took another point of damage yeah and you drop you like drag also it out, worth burn, it yeah, i have three hit points left <laughs> and it no four, and it, no no two <laughs> and it like rolls across the floor um up against like her bedding area and like because her, her house is like her bedroom is in the front area and um, oh, like a studio yeah and so it like rolls up against her bed her bedding and starts to catch on fire she's like yeah after what? this she's, she's so pissed <laughs> <off>. <laughs> cackling really that's all i'm out. doing is just laughing and throwing fire everywhere <laughs> the dog runs up to the door <laughs> it's very scared of the fire just starts scratching on the door trying to get out um <laughs> The woman uh, swings Kevin. She's swinging at you again. Nineteen twenty-two. I like this dice. Damn! <laughs> he jumps favorite. up on the top of. He jumps on the top of her <laughs> log. <laughs> like, fine, oh yeah, God. exactly. That's what I was picturing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. She can't hit you for the life of her. Uh, and her house is on fire. She, like... He's she, unhittable. She, looks at you, she says, what are you? <laughs> I handed my card again. Carl Middleton, I'm your man. <laughs> I'm your man. <laughs> Make one more agility test. You're a fucking freak. <laughs> uh, this one sounds good. This is 11 this time. 11? Okay. So, <laughs> so when you got close oh, to shit. her... No, to... I'm opening that. I have no hit points. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> no. One hit. Is that not good either? One hit, Carl. I only have four hit points. There we go. That's an 18. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> she tries to swing it at you and you dodge out of the way. Um, she... Doesn't want to lose her home, but she also doesn't want her dog to die or her to die. So she runs to the front. She drops the log, um, op- like unlocks the door, and is getting ready to open it to let the dog out. Um, you okay. can act to stop her if you want, or you can just allow her to take this action. Just let her do that, and then we run out too. Yeah. She got my card. That's all I wanted to do. <laughs> she opens the I li- door. I lit her house on fire. That's all I wanted to do. <laughs> So, so she lets she lets the dog out. She, okay. Uh, she darts out and then she slams the door shut. Um, but you can. We can make a strength check. Yeah, to try because like, she's trying to hold with, the door shut. She's with to him it, and know. me, probably right. Do we get to? Yeah, yeah. Can we? Okay. What do we do? Just like roll both roll a d twenty or what? So since you're help, so one of you roll, and then since there are two of you helping, like. <clears throat> For each additional person, uh, we'll lower the DR by one. So normally okay. it would be DR12, so it would be DR11. 
Okay. I think we just hold out some fruit and nuts and try to convince the dog to come with us. <laughs> the dog already went outside, though. That's the dog's said. already outside. Correct. <laughs> I'm just saying. Wait, how would that work? How would you get him? You're to not even saying things. We're outside with the dog, are we? No, no, no. You're, yeah, you're, yeah, no, no we're we're oh, we're stuck on the inside. Show. She, okay. yeah, yeah. she trapped us in I the house, you. and now we want it. We're trying to shove our way out. Okay, then, yeah. Um, I would, at that point, stab her with my letter opener. Yeah. Well, the door's shut. She's, she's, no, we're, she, we're, she's we're, we're, we're inside. Yeah. She, oh, she's on the, the outside. outside. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. All right. Okay, then, yes. Um, we're going to, we're going to roll. Uh, we're going to try to shove the door open. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. Do we roll it? All right. I'm going I'm to roll it. So we're. Uh, so. Wait, are we doing got, one of those things where oh, only one of us rolls, but they have a lower DR or something? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Billy will roll an and I will help. <laughs> yes. And Billiam is using his last omen. Okay. Because. That was that was a three. Now it is a twelve. So if it's a plus one, it's a thirteen. Okay. So you manage to you guys slam into the door and it but it budges open and you can see she's trying to keep you guys um you know inside, but she's kind of tired from swinging that log at Kevin and missing so many times. <laughs> so you guys manage to like push, like burst the door open, and she like steps back, and she looks just furious, like she's still gonna try, like she still wants to fight, like because her house is on fire and all this, this whole thing didn't work out. <laughs> well, yeah, come at me, uh, and or let me walk by. <laughs> okay, that's, so, that's, that's, so that's what's happening. If I if she doesn't let me walk by, I'm just gonna attack. <laughs> okay. So so. Oh, okay, so you're just gonna go ahead and like as she's going to okay, all right. Yeah. So yeah. So here. So okay. So, so as far lieu, as yeah. oh yeah. In lieu of an agility test, you're attacking her. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. However, that would work as far as if you if yeah. you hit with the attack. DM you yeah. figure it. Yeah. So if you hit with the attack, then yeah. she with your attack, then you will stop. You will like stop her before she could get the chance. Essentially. Makes sense. Or yeah. I could just and then dodge. If you admit, and then if you fail, then she'll... I am you know. I yeah. am quicker as far as dodging. Yeah. Okay. So... Should, if you're in close combat, I'll say this. If you're in close combat, you always have those two options. You can either attack... Either attack in response or dodge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's one. Um... I guess it's. I guess I'm gonna go with the dodge because it would make it a. So that's fourteen. Okay, so she rushes <laughs> forward and tries to. I'm not grab. particularly strong. I'm just quick. <laughs> yeah, so she she like reaches forward and tries to grab a hold of uh, the antlers that are on your head, and you yeah. manage to turn at the last second. And she just goes past you. Okay, as she goes past, I'd like to use my uh, skills learned in uh, Tai Chi for arthritis to redirect her momentum and toss her back into the fire. Oh, you You're mean like the walk? fire? As in, he's going to try to toss her. her. Yeah, I'm going to toss her into the room and close okay. the door. Back okay. into the house. <laughs> so, but I feel like that would still be a strength test. It's still strength, yes. Yes, that, okay, that's fine. That's fine. It's worth a shot. You could. You, who knows? It is. Who knows? Definitely. So. Uh, but not today. No, that's that's an eight. But not today. I try to grab her in minutes. Oh! <laughs> you you run up and try to grab her, and she just turns and looks at you and just like swats you away like you were a fly. And you <laughs> stumble backwards. <laughs> I'm going to call this a win and get the fuck out of here. Okay. Uh, she's going to try and grab you one more time, though, before you can run off. So, um... Okay. Okay. So agility? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, 19. Okay. So she tries to grab you, and you're just way too quick. Uh, she turns and then sees that her dogs are just running around in the street, like 
playing, and she's like, "Get back here!" She's like yelling at him, and they're I'm gonna throw a piece around. of jerky. Throw a piece of jerky to one of them. And you you <laughs> and throw call, the jerky. At, tell him he's a good boy. Over, <laughs> and they start they start like fighting over it. They're like two, like one of them bites it, another one is trying to get it from her, and they're just fighting. <laughs> nice. It's a real Halloween. And right so, now. if I eat some of these fruits and nuts, can I re- regain hit points? How do I regain hit points? I don't even remember. You have to rest. Mm-hmm. There you go. So a rest but, for like several hours, right? But nuts are superfoods after all. So yes. if you eat, if you eat that, you will regain D two health. There you go. Oh, cool. Okay. So I'm going to do that. And then hold on. I'll be right back. Okay. And now a brief word from our sponsors. I hope we don't have any sponsors. So the word is very good. I mean, you don't have to like wait for me. You can do whatever you're doing. I'm just going to step away for a second. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. So there's havoc in the streets. Um, you guys take a little breather if you want. You can eat a little bit. Um, but you see there's just chaos going on. You see, like, some kids riding on uh, goats. They have, one of them has, like a, a, like, a wooden pail, like a milk bucket on its head, and they're just riding through the streets. Other kids are shooting the windows out of buildings with a slingshot. Um, it's just havoc. But you hear, like, a jingling sound. And you see, like, walking in the middle of the road is this, the size of a child, but this, like, sort of, like, a clown or jester-looking character who has an enormous chin that goes down, like, past her waist, and it's pointed. And she has this, her her face is this pale, and she has big, long eyelashes and just, like, very porcelain-looking teeth. And she's dancing around saying, come on, come on. She's jingling this stick that's got bells attached to it. And she's just prancing around. And some of the kids are just standing there watching her to see what she wants. Well, I want to go see what she wants. Okay. She says, come join me, prancing Polyp, and go and enjoy the fruits of the night. She's dancing around. She says, "Come with me to Rotten Ethel's Macabre Manor." Wait, wait. She's Did dancing she call around. The prancing polyp. Yes. Just making sure. <clears throat> she's dancing around. She does like a. She's very strangely shaped because of like her huge chin that goes down past her waist. Like it gives her such a strange shape, but she like does like a cartwheel. And just kind of spins around the ground like a wheel for like a few seconds and then lands back on her feet. And she's like walking through the center of the town, heading out of town towards the woods. All right. Well, she said fruits of the night. I think we mm-hmm. should follow her. That looks exceedingly dangerous. She probably does not have proper insurance. You see, like, a kid that's just basically wearing, a like, a pillowcase that has, like, holes cut in it for his limbs. And he's just walking. He's, like, dragging around a rusty chain that's got, um, like, a, a chicken skeleton, like, attached by the leash. And he's just dragging it as he's walking towards this house. And he's, like, gesturing. He's like, come on, come on. All right. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, why not? Okay, so you guys start walking out um, towards the woods, and you you notice that the perimeter of the town is protected with these lanterns that are hanging on posts, but you're walking right through out into the woods, and um, with the customs, uh, generally people don't go out into the woods at night just because it's supposedly quite dangerous. Uh, I was always dangerous in the woods, but during this night, if you're not within the safety of the lanterns, you may be attacked by angry spirits, hungry spirits. I Uh, reach into my briefcase and pull out a lantern. And I light it. Okay. You light the lantern. 
And you see, as Paula is dancing, she's doing this with her fingers in the air, and you can see these little, like, wisps of fire swirling around, creating, like, a little bit of light as well as she's just dancing and jumping and laughing. So occasionally, she'll, like, poke a child in the belly with a stick and, like, say something to make fun of them, and then, like, all the other kids will laugh, and the other kid will look really angry for a second before he starts laughing. So she's leading like a, a trail of like four other kids beside you guys. And you guys are walking up through this path that you don't really, you have all lived in, in Toad Wallow for your whole lives. Uh, and you don't remember ever seeing this path that leads out into the woods. But you come to, eventually you come to a clearing where you see this ancient looking two-story house that just looks so out of place just in the middle of the, the woods here. Um, it has like a small gate that uh, leads up to the house. Um, and it looks like the posts, instead of them being wood, they're large femurs, look like cow femurs. I can't and, even uh, count the amount, the amount of violations I see. There's so many <laughs> housing violations. Giant femurs? There's no way they got zoning for that. <laughs> And Pran Prancing Polyp is just saying, come, come, taste the fruits of the night. Your wildest dreams will come true. And she's just leaping, capering around. You guys approach the porch and you see uh, there are four pumpkins, uh, jack-o'-lantern sit sitting on the, on the, uh, the porch with flames emanating from them. And Prancing Polyp says that everyone is invited to the party, but if you come in, you must stay the entire night. And if you make it through the manor without giving up, uh, you will win the fruits of the night and all of your dreams come true. That's what all she says is very vague. She says, you will gain the fruits of the night. You'll taste the sweet fruits of the night, and taste your dreams will all come true. Night. And well, that's well, that's fruits, creepy. I've been very I'm irregular in. lately. He says, perhaps you need some sort of insurance. <laughs> that would be she, fantastic. She, she, <laughs> she, she fantastic. Like, winks. She winks in your direction. And she takes her stick and she taps on the door, the front door of the manor, which swings open and you see a short, stout, toad-looking man with a tray in his hands. And he looks very unenthused. But you see that there are eight or like orb-shaped candies covered in some sort it's some sort of like bright red shell with little flecks of golden uh granules and the man comes and presents them to you and everyone some of the kids try to take one and he just glares at them and they only i mean they try to take more than one he glares at them and they learn their manners and just take one so um, as they as he steps up towards you, he says, please take a treat. I'm just going to take one. I handed my card and I uh, take one. <laughs> In my <All> right. card. <laughs> my card. So, uh, so right down on your list or somewhere in your inventory, fruit of the night. Fruit of the night. I have returned. And just like Ricky Martin said, Turns over. she looks like a spider and she shapes like a bean, like every girl in history. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> sure. Anyway, so uh, everyone takes a fruit of the night um, and Cyril is the name of the, the man offering these to you and he says, please enjoy them and then he Opens the door, walks in, and slams it. And Polyp says, try, try. 
take a bite. I want to watch someone else eat one first. Okay. <laughs> so the other kids just gobble them up, and it's they they bite into it, and this this sort of syrupy substance oozes out and gets all over their faces, but they eat it just, I mean, r ravenously. Um, and they're all like licking their hands and everything. It's just stuck all, it's so sticky. It's all over their faces. And they turn and they run towards Paula and they say, please, more, more. And she laughs and bonks them on the head with her stick that's got the bells and they like clutch their head. And they're like, fuck. But the kids like they all want more, and she's like, "Yes, if you can, if you can stay the night at Rotten Apples, then you may have much more than this." So, mm. what are you guys gonna do? Creepy. That all seems very unseemly, and my belly is currently full of fruits and nuts. Until I pass that, <laughs> I couldn't possibly eat anymore. She says, "Well." You could save yours for later if you would like to come in still and see what Rotten Apple has in store. I would. She says, all right. I would also like else? to come inside. She opens up the door. She says, what about you other two? You with the monkey. Rotten Apple loves, loves pets. Mm. Uh, the one with the monkey has actually been missing for the last half an hour. I, I'm assuming, uh, much like the monkey, things are being passed. <laughs> so, so you turn when she says you with the monkey, and you see standing there where your friend had previously been is just a literal skeleton with a monkey sitting on his shoulders, just clinking the, the skull with the hammer. And... <laughs> Then the skull, the skeleton just collapses, and the monkey shrieks and runs off into the woods. <laughs> and she goes, Paul goes, uh, well, never mind. And she says, you, what about you with the old crone face? Is Chris gone too? No, I'm here. Chris might be gone. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, no, there he goes. She says, you, um, you look like a, a reasonable old woman. I am reasonable. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> she says, would you like to come in? Yeah, sure. <laughs> she says, all right. And gestures everyone in. She steps inside, shuts the door, and it locks immediately. And before you, you see a hallway. Um really the nicest looking house that any of you have ever seen, uh, but still pretty like dusty and musty by today's standards. But uh, there's a hallway that leads to um, a three-way uh, intersection. And um, also on the right-hand right, right -hand side is a stairwell that goes up. There are various paintings on the wall of landscapes and lighthouses. There is a uh, okay. like a large vase next to the door that has um, various walking sticks and an umbrella. There are you notice that there are windows um, with bars on them. Okay. Also, there not surprised. <laughs> of course, you do. <laughs> and. Uh, also standing in the hallway down towards um, a uh, well, okay. So so there's to the left there's a doorway. To the right there's a doorway. For, uh, up a little more, like a few feet further, there's a stairway that leads upwards. Then there's a door to the back, uh, the back of the room. There is a very weathered looking um, set of armor there with an ax by the side. Um, the doors, all three of the doors seem to be uh, open, slightly slightly ajar. Um, Paula, she explains to you that you have free reign of the house, except for any doors that are locked. She says, please do not try to uh, break in. That would be against the rules. But she says, all you have to do is stay here all night and 
enjoy the party with Rod and Ethel, but she says, but be aware that there are other guests here and they're very determined to win the fruits of the night as well. And she says, and all I ask after that is don't damage Ethel's house. She's trying to keep it in good condition. But she says, enjoy the party. And then she uh, capers around, does a backflip, and then she goes through the door to the left. All right, then. Hmm. There are, uh, there's, there's like a small table in this room also. Sorry, not to interrupt, but it's got a little, uh, no, no. it's got a little oil lamp that's illuminating the room. Okay. Yeah, the only thing I was going to say is we should, uh, I'm, I want to go look around. I'm just going to, I'm going to go check out one of those. Uh, do Actually, no, the first thing I want to know is you said there was an axe. Is it like a working axe or one of those like display axes that they put with those fake armor suits? It is, um, well, you can approach it and make a presence test to, to see okay. if you think it looks yeah, like Yeah, I'm going to do that. If you think it looks like it's, uh, you know. I'll be right. Yeah. So he's going to check that axe out. What are the rest of you going going to do? <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go. I don't know. They, you said there was a door all the way to the back. I'm back. Yes, there's a door. <clears throat> yes, there's a door uh, to the back of the room um, that's uh, next to the uh, like the the stairwell, the bottom part of the stairwell. I'm going to go check that door out. Okay. So you open it up and uh, you see there is a sconce with a torch um, and it's illuminating this small upper stairway or uh, the small stairway that leads to the not upper level, lower level. Uh, behind the door, there's a stairway that, that goes down. You can smell it's very musty. And you can kind of smell like you know, fresh earth and sort of smells like mushrooms. I'm going to test the structural integrity of the sconce by twisting it. Okay. So you grab it and start pulling on it, and all you do is manage to uh, dislodge the torch, which is now in your hand. I keep the torch, because clearly that was unsafe. Okay, so now you have a torch in your inventory. <laughs> <clears throat> if you hit someone with it, it's a D4. Uh, I, I thought originally that improvised weapons were a D2, but they're actually not. They're a D4. Um, D2 Bad. is unarmed. Uh, so if you hit with the torch, um, it deals a D4, but then it also deals one point of damage each round until they put the fire out. Mm. <clears throat> So that's what Kevin did. He walked into uh, this, uh, he opened the door at the end of the hallway and found that it leads to what appears to be the upper part of the basement. So how about this axe? Is it a real axe or was it just like a display piece? It is rusty, but it is, it is a real axe. It looks like it, it's got some like marks on it. It looks like it's been, you know, used before. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to take it? I am going to pick it up, yeah. All right, it deals a D8. Fuck yeah. <clears throat> and it is two-handed. <clears throat> what are you doing, Fartilda? I think I want to go take that helmet and that armor and get it from my head. All right. Brilliant idea. So you walk over to the uh, the the statue, not the statue, the armor, and you try to take the head off, the helmet off, but it seems to be fastened on quite well. Uh, it will take a strength test to remove it. That was a natural 20. All right. You spit on your palms, <laughs> grab a hold of the helmet, and yank it off. And as soon as you do, you see beneath it is the only thing holding up this 
set of armor just seems to be slabs of glistening meat with no discernible like it's like, like a vaguely remin it's vaguely reminis reminiscent of a head shape but that's it there are no eyes or mouth like that's what's beneath uh. this <laughs> that's what's beneath <laughs> this uh, <clears throat> helmet um but you have a helmet now which reduces your damage by one um also it can act as a shield if you take damage you can sacrifice the helmet to prevent damage from one attack all right <clears throat> i'm gonna leave my club at the place where that axe was by the way <laughs> are you gonna put it in the hand of the knight yeah i'm just gonna put it right yeah at, right where the axe <laughs> okay yeah so you I do that like I'd like to take the club out of the hand and put it somewhere a little, put it in the fire because there's there's meat <laughs> in here. Well, there's there is no uh, <laughs> there is no fireplace in this room, mm -hmm. in the hallway, um, but yeah, you can do that. You can take if you want. You can take the club and throw it somewhere else if you want. Um, oh, by the way, once now that the helmet is removed, you've noticed like there are two flies that have landed on the meat thing that's beneath the armor and they're just running around looking at it <laughs> crawling around on it crawling around and looking at it yeah how fresh is the meat uh you smell it uh make a presence test to see if you can determine if it's Freshness. nasty or not that is a natural one so uh it's delicious <laughs> it looks quite fresh and surprisingly kind of uh, delicious. Like, you notice the marbling of the meat. One should yeah. never waste meat! I start carving out <laughs> some selections of meat with my letter opener. Okay. Into my sack. So Back in the war, we, we had to ration meat, you see. <laughs> of have a sample of, uh, you have a sample of mystery meat. <laughs> One should never waste the opportunity to cut off a slab of meat if it falls for a, from, from like anywhere. If you've been <laughs> gifted meat, you should accept the gift, is what I'm saying. Um, the other kids that are with you, they're not interested in this hallway. They're like, this is lame. So uh, they go and they actually all four go in the room to the left and then shut the door. <clears throat> Shut the door. Jeez, what are they doing in there? <laughs> Who knows? You'll have to find out. Or never find <laughs> out. It's up to you. you don't have to go through that door if you don't want. You can go through a different door if you want. It's up to you guys. Um Yeah, I would like to is there is there still a door that's open right now? Yes, the the uh the door to the cell or to the basement is open. Um then the door to the right, like to the first door on the right, is ajar as well. I'll go that way to the right. Okay. So you go okay. in to what seems <clears throat> to be just like a like maybe a a study or something. Uh, there's a there's a musty old bookshelf. Um, there's some taxidermy animals. There's a fish on the wall. There is the ugliest bear you've ever seen in your entire life, poorly taxidermied. Um, there is a, uh, there's like a mannequin in one corner, and it's got this just the squirrely and mangiest looking little like fox uh, scarf wrapped on wrapped around its neck um <laughs> there is a fireplace in this room but it is uh it is lit just barely it's, it's kind of just some cinders um and you see at the end of the room there is another door mm. okay <laughs> where uh, what is the rest of uh my compatriots doing oh i'm, I'm just going to follow you so uh, I'm going to go yeah, to the okay, fireplace cool. and uh, build up the fire so I can cook my mystery meat. <laughs> okay. What about you, Fartilda? 
Um, I'm going to go take a peek and see what's beyond in that other door. Okay. So you open the door, to uh, the, the, the first door on the left, and you see a dimly lit room uh, with a long table. You see candles in the middle. And you see four children that had come in with you standing at the corners of the room just watching as there are five people sitting at this table with a spirit board in the middle. <laughs> and there is a woman at <clears throat> at the uh, the end of the table who says, please join us. We're going to speak with the dead. I'm going to shut the door again. <laughs> hang out with my friends. <laughs> hang out with your friends, is that what you said? Yep. Okay. All right, so you go into the room that they're in, <clears throat> and uh, they're trying to cook meat over the fire. Well, Kevin's trying to cook meat over the fire. And as you walk in, you hear a voice say, What are you doing in here? <laughs> <laughs> It, That's it all I do in response. <laughs> as soon as Chris walks in, as soon as Bartolo walks in, that's what you hear. Um, <laughs> <cooking> me. <laughs> it says, I haven't eaten meat in years. <laughs> Due to the war, I know. That's what I was just telling them. What you never waste the opportunity to eat meat. Um, you're cooking the meat over the fire and you hear <clears throat> the same voice say, ooh, that's smelling real nice. <laughs> the so shit I have from this porch is what adds the flavor. <laughs> he says, could I have a nibble, please? Oh, definitely. Everyone make a presence test. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Two five. A two, a five, and an eleven. <laughs> fuck. Okay. Yes. So you guys are looking around. <laughs> two five you, eleven. You guys are looking around trying to figure out where the voice is coming from. Oh, I assumed it was inside of my own head. Mm. I wasn't concerned. <laughs> no, everybody hears it. Like everybody, <laughs> you guys are like I looking know. around, examining <laughs> everything. And the voice said, <laughs> hey, I'm right up here. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know why I even made you guys make a presence test. It's so stupid. I just wanted to fuck with you anyway. There's <laughs> there's the fish that's mounted on the wall is bending its body and talking to you and singing at you guys. Oh, it's one of those fucking, <laughs> but it's like a taxidermied fish. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Bass. <laughs> Billy Bass, yeah. <laughs> My mm -hmm. name's also Billy. Yeah, he says, <laughs> pleasure to make your acquaintance. Could I have a little piece of that meat? <laughs> uh, I take the torch that I was broasting the meat on over to the fish and stick some in its mouth. You hold it up to his mouth and he opens it and just swallows the meat. And even though he swallowed it, it's like, you know how in a puppet show the Puppets still choose, even though the, obviously it's not that the fish is doing that. John already, yeah. And so <laughs> it's like, mm, that's that. Oh, that's mighty nice. <laughs> you boys are awful nice. You're not like the others. Crashing the place, shitting where they shouldn't. I don't <laughs> like it at all. Shit, there's no one. There's no one like Carl Middleton. That's the Carl <laughs> Middleton guarantee. <laughs> he says <clears throat> I'd sure hate for anything bad to happen to you little boys and we would also older hate that and older gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> no, I just assumed he was like taller you know no <laughs> well sort of you no bunch. I mean I yeah. Oh, well, he's reached good the point. point where his bones are starting to collapse in on themselves. Yeah, yeah gravity like what, is taking its toll. Yeah. I want to take the fish. I was imagining was like, <laughs> go, go ahead. 
I want to take the fish off the wall and I want to put it in my my treat bag. <laughs> he goes, "Hey, who turned out the lights?" <laughs> oh, read fish. I'm gonna flip it so that way the face is painted up. <laughs> he goes, "Oh, that's awful nice." Let me look around. He says, but I gotta tell you right now, you gotta get out of here. You gotta get out of Dodge. The treats aren't worth it. Or maybe they are. I've never had one, so who am I to say? But no one has mm -hmm. ever made it through the whole night. Well, of course not. If they think they're in Dodge, they must be terribly confused. Dodge is like three cities away. Hmm. Good point. He turns towards you and just goes, he doesn't know what to say. Exactly. <laughs> it's important to know where you are. <laughs> He's just a fish. He doesn't know any better. Yeah. He's I'm like, going oh, to... I don't want Ethel to hurt you, boys. I would like to tear off a piece of my fruit of the night, which I have not eaten yet. I'm going to tear off okay. a piece and let him let the fish have it because he said he's never had one <laughs> okay okay <laughs> see what he didn't see. Yeah, i, I want to see what he does all right so <laughs> i want to see what happens he, he eats the fruit of the night um, okay hang on one moment <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. oh my gosh i didn't realize this was that special well, maybe i should be. go ahead and eat it <laughs> so Okay, so he, he he so he eats it and he says, "I've always wanted to explore the world. I've never been out of here, or at least I don't remember before." And he, his body starts like twitching. He starts like flopping rigidly because he's you know. Oh gosh! Back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and these like. Bindly appendages burst through his body and end in these big, like pads with neck, like big knobby toes. And he has four of them like a spider. Around. He starts walking around and he's and he, <laughs> <laughs> he says, I can finally move, I can finally go. And Fuck he, yeah, little brother. He scuttles over. <laughs> He scuttles over to the door and just keeps <laughs> smashing the like smashing the mouth that he's on into the wall and then reaches up with the hand with his or with his toes and opens the door and scuttles out to the side. Um, <laughs> like and you you hear him scuttling up the wall and then you hear like glass breaking. <laughs> and, awesome. And like jarring around as you see like part of the mouth that he was on, like you can see from the open door. The wood that he was mounted on, part of it, like, breaks off and falls. And he <laughs> apparently, like, makes his, somehow makes his way through the bars that are in the window above in that room and makes it out. I'm going to yell, bye, fish. <laughs> <laughs> These trees can't be FDA approved. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't see how that could possibly, possibly have happened. Well, <laughs> I can't tell if it's a good or a bad thing that I didn't eat that. Do you want to throw um, legs? <laughs> as you as you guys uh, are, you know, just sort of trying to make heads or tails of what just happened, you hear um, heavy footsteps in the hallway now. Okay. Here. Do do we close the door behind us, or do we just leave? The, well, we're just. I don't think I don't remember saying that we well, did. But I think I don't you remember. guys did. I think the door was shut, but then the, the fish just opened the door when it exited and okay, yeah. when it went into the hallway. So, mm -hmm. so um, so the door is open currently. Um, okay, if, if someone wants to shut it, they can. I wasn't um, even thinking. I was just like, like let's just see what happens. But it does sound like something is <laughs> walking forward into the hallway, and then you you hear like boots stepping on glass like crunching and you can see from the open door you can see part of that suit of armor has moved and it's like standing there oh like standing in front of the door into the leads you know outward and it just like it's just the the 
you know, piece of like meat that's there where the where a head would be, even though there are no eyes, it like tilts upwards towards where the broken window is, as if to observe. Like pretending it has, pretending yeah. it has eyes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it just stands there for a few seconds. I'm gonna shut that door. And then, okay. <laughs> as as you move to to shut the door, it turns towards you, but you manage to shut it. <laughs> Did he see that I'm wearing his helmet? <laughs> uh you don't know because it doesn't have eyes, so you're not really sure. But um you're on the other side of the door and you see the doorknob turning. Is there a lock? Yes. I'm gonna lock it. All right. <laughs> You lock it, and uh, the, he's trying to turn it. He stops for a second, and then he just knocks. You're, you know, knock, knock, knock. And say, who's there? No answer. <laughs> Was that one in that bad? He knocks again. Knock, knock, knock. Well, if it's going to be rude, it doesn't get any meat. <laughs> who's there? It stands there and waits another few seconds. Doesn't say anything. The knocks again. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> Doesn't say anything, and then you hear it walk away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're like, these trick or treaters are so rude this year. <laughs> <laughs> I I wanted it. Does I thought it was gonna say trick or treat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you guys are just standing there, though, you hear in the hallway a door open and then close. Okay. And then the knob starts turning frantically again. Well, before it didn't turn frantically, but now it is. Shit! <laughs> and then it sounds like someone's kicking the bottom of the door, like bam, 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 kicking it very quickly. And they're still rustling around the the, the doorknob. There's another door, and then, right? And then you hear like you hear someone curse. You can't tell it's kind of muffled, but they stop. They go running off into the other room. Uh, after hmm. a few seconds, the the other door um, in the at the other end of the room um, opens up, and you see Cyril, that stout older guy. From before, he walks in and he says, mm -hmm. what are you boys doing in here? It doesn't look like you've joined the others. Looks like you're you're plotting something, maybe. I noticed that my plotting. fish isn't on the wall. I don't know what you're talking about. Would you like some meat, sir? What? He says, <laughs> I, he says, he says, he says, the mistress tells me that I'm too paranoid, but we've had some real ne'er do wells come by the last few years. Never can be too careful. But what did you say to him? Yeah, we're just cooking some meat. Would you like some meat? One should never turn down free meat. He like he's grimaces and he says, I'd rather not. He says, but if you'd like something a little less gamey. We have some treats in the dining hall or the in the dining room. We have a a very sumptuous feast for anyone who'd like to partake. You can join me if you'd like. I, I turning down meat is just disrespectful, so I'm going to have to decline. I already have meat. <laughs> he says very well, but. Please don't damage any of Madam's furniture or her prized animals. I expect to find that fish returned by the end of the night. We don't know anything about a fish. What fish? He says, hmm. <laughs> Indeed. And then he just steps out of the room. Oh, uh, wait, no, no, I'm going to stare at him with my devil face and say, the fish left of its own volition. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> And that is a 19 minus 1, so 18. Well, you don't even really have to do that because that is literally what happened. I know. You don't, yeah, you don't. 
but he wants that guy to believe well, it. Where you, you want to express that it really happened. Yeah. Right. And he says, oh, did you feed it something? It requested meat. What could never turn down free meat, you see? <laughs> He says that's he says that fish never shuts up about leaving this room. He says it was one of the mistress's favorite specimens. She's going to miss it terribly. You both or not you both. He says the three of you best return it before the night's over. Or replace it with something of equal value. And he looks at you he looks you all up and down, he says, which I doubt you have, and then leaves. What the hell is that supposed to mean? <laughs> He's a real catty bitch. That he is. <laughs> so He's a real catty wampus. <laughs> he is. <laughs> uh, so he leaves the room. Uh, you Yeah, guys... I think I'd like to go downstairs too. Oh, yeah, you, you what? Sorry. Successfully cook, you successfully cooked the meat. Uh, you can eat it if you like, or you can save it for later, but you have a, a, a serving of cooked mystery meat now. Good. As previously stated, I'm not hungry, but one should never turn down free meat. Fair enough. Um, so, uh, so, you said you want to go downstairs, Evan? Um, yeah, I guess so. Okay, so if you I'm just you trying unlock, to see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, if you unlock the hallway door, um, you can go out and go in there, and then go down to the basement. Uh, the door leads to the basement. Yeah, why not? Um, okay. And don't forget. Uh, yeah, let's uh, check that out. Yeah, so we, so there again. Kevin has the torch there. Yeah. So you walk to the top of the basement. Oh, I have dark vision anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, you do. Um, so. There's just this little uh, doorway that leads down to the basement. Um, as you step, they you know, take a step onto the stairs. They're very creaky. It smells very musty and earthy. You can smell like it smells like mushrooms. Um, it just smells kind of damp. The sort of place uh, where they should be employing okay. more dog salt. I detest how moist it is. If this place was well salted, it would not be so right. moist. <laughs> That's very true. Good point. Um, so, is everyone just going down the stairs then and checking it out, I'm assuming? Before I go down there, I want to peek in the kitchen again. I don't want to go in there. I just want to kind of open up the door and stick my head in again. Oh, where Sarah, where Sarah went? Yep. Okay, so you peek in and you see this. Uh, you see flames from um, this uh, brick oven that they have. And you see suspended from various hooks are different uh, slabs of meat. You can see a wealth of different chopped vegetables, some of which you've never seen before in your life. Um, on a long countertop. Um, there is like a crude stove. Uh, it smells surprisingly very good in this room. Uh, but you see like a, a figure frantically moving about. He's got multi he's got four arms. He's tall and slender and has leathery skin. And he, one pair of um, hands holds uh, like a a, bla a knife, like a kitchen knife, and then like a, a sharpening, um, like a knife sharpener. And the other is like uh, mix mixing something in a bowl with a spoon and lifts it up and then blows on it and then takes a, t takes a lick and then adds some spices from a tiny jar into it and still cooking. Uh, then puts down the knife sharpener and starts chopping vegetables, throwing them in a pot. He's basically just like very frantically running around cooking preparing food but he doesn't notice you when you look inside so i'm just gonna quietly close that door and i'm gonna go see what these guys are doing 
okay. sneaking around. Okay, so you go out into the hallway <laughs> um, to see what they're doing, and they're, they're descending the staircase. Uh, you do notice that the armored um, individual is not in the hallway, and, and there's broken glass on the floor. <laughs> um, and, and like when you look up, you can see that there are bits of the broken mount that are still stuck between the bars where the fish had just like forced its way through. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, as you guys descend into the basement, you see that it's very spacious. Uh, the room that you're in, there are just shelves of just various junk, rusty implements, um, dusty old tools and things. Um, you see there are also like on the walls of the basement, there are, there's like moss and there are, you know, mushrooms and things growing. And you can see, you can hear like a trickling sound. Um, and uh, if you step around, there's like a small puddle and you can see there are about five or six little toads that are just hopping around in this <laughs> area. Um, there are also two doors. I like this place. <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty. It's it's uh, okay. Dark. You're the only one that can see without light, but um, it, it it's just uh, it feels just damp and kind of snug, secure. Like there's all, so much stuff on the shelves. It's kind of it doesn't make you feel claustrophobic, but it makes you, it's kind of like um, Derek North's grandfather's subterranean lair at the. Southside Diner. It's sort of like that, only it's moist and has toads. Oh, on. yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's all kinds of junk. Like, right on. Shelves and, and there are like two doors. Uh, there's one at the north end of the basement. Yeah. And there's one at the east end of the basement. I'd like to catch a toad for my treat bag. Okay. Uh, make, a, uh, make an agility test to try and snatch one up. Uh, only a six. What'd you say? Oh, only man, a six? I... Uh, yep. He's, he, you try to grab him and he just hops right out of the way. I agree. I want one too. Oh, shit. I dropped it on the floor. Damn it. I can't even see it now. Hold on. Make the agility. Okay. I dropped my thing on the floor. Uh, <laughs> 15. Okay. You grab one. He's, <laughs> he, you know, he squirms and he pees, but that's all he does. <laughs> that's the amount of struggling that that he does. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so gonna put him in, toad, my, in the bag. <laughs> add a toad to your inventory. He has one HP. You know, I think I might like to eat my fruit of the night and just okay. see what happens. Okay. Go ahead and consume it, and wait one moment. Well, the first thing that happens to you, have you taken any damage? Yes. Okay, roll a d4. Uh, four. Okay, so you regain that much... Um, lost HP. Oh, sweet. And there'll be something else. Just one moment. We need, like, waiting music playing in the background, like the... Ba -ba -ba -da. Like music of some, yeah, of some kind. Let's go out to the kitchen. Let's go out to the kitchen. <laughs> Let's go out to the kitchen and get ourselves a treat. Uh, okay. Let's see. Roll a d20. Uh, five. Oh, 
All right. Uh, so your mind just kind of starts to reel. And you feel sort of dizzy. Um, and you feel cold all of a sudden. As you see, like, at, at the the top of the room this like pale nimbus sort of appears and it starts to snow inside the room while while he's doing that i also <laughs> can i make another agility test and catch him a toad also <laughs> for, yeah. for tilda <laughs> yeah that's a uh, uh it's a 20. Okay, you snatch another toad. It squirts. Yeah, hey, I got <laughs> And so I picks it up and I'm about to hand it to her or him. I guess I can't tell uh -huh. with the mask on. You anyway, yeah. Fartilda. Yeah, I chanced to hand it to Fartilda and realize that he's just sort of staring off into space or yeah, something. Yeah, staring at the staring at the <laughs> ceiling of the of the basement. Um <laughs> And I don't see snow or anything, do I? No, but you do. That's what I thought. <laughs> you do not, but you do see the warmth of Fartilda's breath coming from the mask. Oh, but, neat. Okay. Yeah, it looks like steam, yeah. But it doesn't feel cold to me? No. Neat. Okay. And Fartilda, you feel cold, I'm... but you feel alive. You feel vigorous. All right. Feeling good. Yeah. Um so uh what else are you guys gonna do? Oh oh well another thing. Uh, so on your next um for one whole like fight or encounter, you have a plus one to hit and to damage. Awesome. As you just feel very like invigorated and like just amped. And you can, you can, you like, if, if someone were to, oh, wait, never mind, you're a quivering mass, right? Underneath your, mm -hmm. yeah. So, but you have, do you have eyes or do you not have eyes? I guess I've got eyes. Okay. So your pupils would just be extremely dilated right now. You just are very. Got it. Interested okay. In what have you? I've had my stims for the day. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so the, as I said, there's a, there's a, um, there's a door to the north and then a door to the east of the basement. Which will you approach? Or are you guys going to go back upstairs? Because there's still, there's also, and then there's also the way that you guys came. I like the door to the east. I'm going to go check that out. Okay. Uh, you go to the door on the east, you open it and there's a dark room uh it smells very strongly of earth and mushrooms and moisture and with your torch you can see uh it's not a very big room it looks like another like small storage room but it leads to another small stairway that leads up to what appear to be the cellar doors uh they lead outside and uh, there is a heavy chain that is attached, locking it. A chain. So we're, and that's the way to get out of this place. It well, it's one of the ways out. out. Like it's I mean, I mean, he went through the door, and it looks like that would lead out, but it's locked. Right. Yeah. So obviously, uh, we can another, go back the way we came, if, well, and we can go to the other door. Yeah, yeah. There's also a door that's to the north of. Uh, Okay. All right, so I'll take note of that, and uh, yeah, let's go check out the room to the north, or the door to the north. Agreed. Okay. So you open the door, and you're hit with a revolting stench. It smells very strongly of uh, of um, ammonia. Um mm. It smells, you know, putrescent. Um, and the, as you shine the light in here, or uh, if, if you just look through here, you see 
there is, uh, it appears to be a, a larder um, where a lot of food is being stored, but it looks disgusting. It looks, most of it looks like it's rotten. And you see rats are scurrying around everywhere inside of the room, chewing on pieces of rotten meat or... Of awful. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a, there are a hook Yeah, I'm just going to back uh, out of here and get away from that. <laughs> There are like books where there's like rotten meat hanging and just very disgusting. Um, so you're you're just leaving the room? Yeah, I'm just gonna get back. Okay. Uh, is anyone else going in the room or or investigating it or anything? Um, this definitely seems like some sort of code violation. So I'm going to uh, examine it. So uh, when I go talk about the insurance. Uh, I'll have uh, all the details I need. So I'm going to okay. uh, kind of cover my mouth and enter the room. Look around. look around. Okay, make a presence test. That is a one. So my, that is mm -hmm. a negative one. No, actually, that's a, that's a zero. That's no way. Okay, so you're walking one. around and you're, yeah, one you're one walking zero. around and you see all these rodents, like mice and rats. Well, actually, no, you don't see any mice because if you have rats, you don't have mice because rats eat mice. So you just see rats. Rats will kill the mice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so you see rats running around. Um, one of them is standing on like a big wooden table, and it's just chewing on an eyeball. And as you walk, as you're walking <laughs> through the room. You step on something greasy, and it, and you hear a cacophony of shrieks as you turn the torch, and you see a mass of filth and greasy pelts, writhing limbs clawing at the air. As you see, just like an what looks like an amorphous uh, superorganism of like melted rats, uh. and like. Kevin, as you left your foot up, you see you stepped on what appears to be a very lengthy whip of tangled tails. Mm. And it like quivers and undulates and you hear just all, the, you see these little heads that are just attached to this form and they all open their mouth and just scream in concert. <laughs> I say, uh, good day to you, sir. And I slowly <laughs> back out of the room. Fartilda, you you can um, do something since the other two did something before I make this escalate. You found a multi-rat. <laughs> I'd like to yes. be visible. <laughs> You'd like to, okay, so go ahead and roll uh, to turn invisible, roll a presence test. I failed that. Got a seven. Okay. Um, so... You can't cast any spell. Hang on one sec. Can't or ta can't use any scrolls or powers, I guess. For let me see. I think it's um, if you fail, the power doesn't work. You lose D two HP. You become dizzy for the next hour. During this time, powers will always fail in the worst possible way. So oh, fuck. roll. Oh yeah. So roll a, a die, and then if it's odds, take one. If it's even, take two. Lost two. So just your nose starts bleeding. Well, you don't have a nose, but you're, you feel your eyes start bleeding. You feel dizzy. Um, and you feel just extremely disoriented. You don't know if it's just the stench of this room or or what, but you're unable to cast the, the scroll, unfortunately. Uh, so now it is time for initiative. Do you guys want to designate a roller and then choose odds or evens? Um, yeah, you guys want to go evens again? Yeah, why not? Evens. All right. Today. Um, and it's odd. <laughs> okay. Three. All right, and this creature... Uh, what we it get. Attack, it attacks D3 times per round, so... Jesus. Let me see. It's going to attack only once, though, this mm -hmm. turn. Um, so since, Kevin, you're the one that stepped on it, make an agility test. That is a 17, 19, 20. Okay. So the creature 
just you you hear what sounds like just a myriad of tiny claws skittering skittering across the ground in in the room, uh, and it surges forward and lunges at you, and you see all these flashing yellow rodent teeth snapping at you, but you manage to dodge out of the way. But you do bump slightly into the table, but you're still so quick that. It's almost supernatural. <laughs> you guys' turns. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Dang. I don't have any kind of... Um, I guess I'm just going to... Shit. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just waiting, I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna. Sh- yeah, I guess I'm gonna shit. <laughs> I'm gonna try to give it an old stabby stab. Go for it. That's a natural one. Oh no. damn! We should get out of here. <laughs> yeah. We should have. <laughs> okay. So, Fartilda. Um, hang on one sec. Okay, so that could have been way worse. So as you rush forward to try and stab the creature, it's covered in so many different bodies that it's hard to sneak up on it. So it sees you coming, and right as you go to stab it, that tangle of tails lashes up by your face as you take three points of damage. But don't forget, that you do, your costume does count as tier two armor, so you'll reduce that by two. And I'm wearing a helmet. And you're wearing a helmet. Yeah. So go so ahead and roll. Already this, minus um, one, and then roll also. Yeah. And minus nice. one. Nice. Game. Okay. So it, it more so like it hits the helmet, and the helmet spins around when it does it, like scrapes up against your face. And like your, your mask kind of gets like crooked to the side, too. Oh, but that could Get a have been peek worse. at my real face. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you fellas, your turn. <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna take my lantern out, smash it with the lantern, and then poke it with the torch. Shit. Okay. <laughs> uh, so make an attack roll. Uh, presence because it's ranged or oh, strength. Yeah, to... yeah, yeah. You're, yeah, you're throwing. Or, it I mean, how close is it? Can I? I mean, am I close enough just to smash it's right it? right up. It's like really okay. close to you guys. Yeah, so it becomes, You can just I'm smash like, it on there. Yeah, you can, you can smash it on there or you can throw it, but I mean, it's pretty close though. I'll smash it. Okay. That is going to be a 16. Okay. So you smash the, the lantern on it and oil leaks all over it and it's straight. Um, now, if you want to... Well, you did. You did just act for smashing the. Yeah. So that, next. So we'll say next time you. you can hit it with the torch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, what are you other two gonna do? Uh, does the smashing itself do any damage? Yes. Roll. Uh, actually, go ahead and roll a D four. Right. I'll say that smashing a an oil lantern. Uh, three. It'll be. And then it has armor in the form of writhing limbs. So hang on a second. Okay, it takes two damage. Cool. Um, as you see, like pieces of broken glass cut into the little rat bodies, and you see this, you see just like blood gush out, but it's like blood and pus. Um, Yuck. And uh, and what else is? What are Fartilda and Billion going to do? Okay. Um, shit. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm close enough to. I guess I'm close enough to attack it with my axe. Yeah. Since I guess this is what we're doing instead of retreating. Yeah. <laughs> and that is. I'm going to call that a miss because that is a four, probably. Yeah. That's a miss, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So you swing you wide go. and it. it- manages to just all of the bodies working in unison manage to dodge sort of out of shift the way. out of the way <laughs> what about you uh, Fartilda I'm gonna go a stab 
Gabby Seven. And I'm going to miss again. That was a five. <laughs> All right. So you try to stab it, and it just skitters out of the way with surprising quickness. Um, it rears up to attack, and it is going to get to attack twice. So there's going to be one coming at uh, Kevin, so make an agility test, and one coming at... And one coming at 13. 13? 13. Okay, so you managed to get out of the way. And then, uh, Evan, now you make an agility test. Agility. 18. Okay. It rushes past you, attempting to bite you with its yellow teeth, but it misses both of you. It's oily and angry. You guys' turn. I poke it with a torch. Okay. Make an attack yeah, roll I... to poke them. That's a 13. You manage to poke them and go ahead and roll a d4. And then next turn, uh, it's going to take one point of fire damage. That's four. All right. So you burn it and then hang on. Let me. Um, well, I'm going to say that since its armor is its body, so its natural armor, uh, I'm going to say that fire ignores that. Um, so it is on fire, and it is very angry. It's Ugh, still alive, it... but you, it's still alive. It's You can see, though, as it's like on fire, that parts of the um, of the filth that like were caking the rats together, like, starts to like weaken and you see some of the like flaming rats just jump off as normal rats running around fuck yeah it's time to retreat <laughs> <laughs> that's what i was gonna do this whole time <laughs> is that what everyone i mean just work more have it that's what i'm gonna action? do well, you okay? Here's the thing: if you all leave, if you all try to leave, you're all gonna have to make an agility test right. to do that. But you can; it's definitely possible. Okay, then hell yeah. I feel like we've almost killed it, though. It's being it's, on fire well, it, is definitely ruining its day. It's gonna die anyway, but it won't kill. It won't kill us while it's dying. It won't take us with it. Right. What did you get for your for your uh what did everybody get for their defense roll if that's what you guys want to do? Nineteen. Nineteen? Oh, okay. so are we running <laughs> yeah. away? I am. <laughs> like, I don't know about you yeah. guys. Mm. Good enough. I got a ten. <laughs> okay. I got a All twelve. Right. Okay, so so basically <laughs> as you guys are just shoving shoving each other out of the way through the door. Fartilda gets uh, is the last one to try to leave, and as she backs out of the door, or as they back out of the, or try to back through the door, they feel sharp teeth burying themselves into their flesh uh, for two damage. But go ahead and roll for your roll for your uh, armor. Well, bare minimum, uh, one from the helmet, and then no matter what, oh, they're yeah, yeah. Two. yeah. So you're good. So it doesn't damage you, but it, you feel it, um, it has prevented you from exiting the room yet. Um, Fuck. You could feel its teeth scraping against your helmet, and it's got a hold of you. So you yeah. guys make it out of the larder, um, but you notice that Fartilla tried to like open the door and go through and got yanked back. Shit. All right. Well, we're not retreating yet, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to try to save her. Fartilda, you can, if you'd like, try to wriggle free with an agility test. <laughs> I want to try to help at least. Or you can sacrifice your helmet uh, to break free. I got a 14. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, there All you right. go. So you uh, managed to pull free of these grasping little 
claws and teeth and you make it through the door. Uh, the door is still open. It could be, you guys can shut it and try to hold it shut if you if you wanted to trap the rats in the room. Yeah, yeah it's quite Close a good the idea. door. Let's see if we can find something to bar the door. You definitely can. Uh, you look on there's like big pieces of like, cool. uh, there's like part of like an old plow that you could kind of jam up against nice. it. Yeah. Let's do that. Um, so make a strength test to pull it over there before the creature gets through the door. Okay. I will assist. Yeah, same. <clears throat> okay, so lower the DR by two. Okay. <clears throat> so are we am I doing am I doing the roll? Yeah. Yeah, so it so it's okay. ten. Uh that for us, uh, that is a six. Okay. So you guys all try to drag the parts of the plow over, and it is too heavy, but it was still too heavy. <laughs> but it was still too heavy. <laughs> so, a little bit of a, uh, uh, a were werewolf of London, or uh, what is it? American Werewolf in London. Yeah. Um, werewolf in so London, yeah. Guys, <laughs> so you guys try to drag it across, and you don't quite make it to the door. And uh, the creature is just screeching. It's on fire, and it's barch. It's got the door partially open, and it's pulling itself free. And as it's tearing through, uh, you see rats dropping off of it and just running random in random directions. <laughs> Fuck. Um, <laughs> and the creature comes in, and it's still partially on fire, and you know, and the larder is catching on fire now. <laughs> um, but it is in the room now with you guys as you're standing there by the plow. God damn it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's still taking go... damage from being on fire. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I'm going to just still retreat. Okay. All right, so you can run. You can just drop what you're doing and run the fuck away. That's what I figured. Yeah, let's do that. Do that yeah, that's what I'm gonna do at least. <laughs> okay. Are you just running back up the stairs from whence yep. you came? Okay. Yep. We're right back the way I came. Yeah. If that was in danger of being to... immediately clawed, then yeah. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna assume that they are behind me, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and just go for it. <laughs> okay. All right, so you all can just uh, run out of the room. The creature is very badly injured, but is not dead, and it is crawling around, just writhing, trying to get the fire put out. It's just rolling around in the puddles and things, trying to put it out. So <laughs> you, guys, you guys make it to the top of the stairs. And when you do, you see at the top of the stairs, uh, or well, not at the top of the stairs where like you're you're pulling yourself up to, but um, at the other end of the hallway, you see standing between you uh, guys and the door outside is that stack or is that uh, armor with the meat head? Oh shit! <laughs> it's standing there and it starts walking towards you. I'm going to say, oh, oh, I'm gonna say okay. it's a good thing you're here. There's some kind of creature downstairs setting your basement on fire. <laughs> Double mask. When you say that, it starts walking faster. It, it starts walking right up to you, Billiam. Oh, okay. Uh, and it, it walks towards you, and then it just walks right past you and goes down the stairs. Yeah, that's and, uh, right. I was uh, get you, yeah, get you, you gotta <laughs> check it out. <laughs> it goes clunking down and you see it like the the rat has like the rat mass has like put out the fire um but there's still the door is on fire now and uh the armor walks up to the rat pile and the rat pile lunges onto the armor and they're like wrestling around <laughs> on the ground shit <laughs> <laughs> He's like smashing it with his fists and it's like tearing at his meat face and everything. And they're oh, just that's fantastic. Around. I'm going to stop and watch. <laughs> they both they are just of... like very evenly matched, but the like the armor is like ripping rats free from the from the creature and it's just like clawing at the face. 
just it's tearing and tearing face. at the thing. <laughs> and it's just like oozing with like there's just blood everywhere. It's just a bizarre, sick mess. By the time that it's all over with, there's just like a pile of dead rats and then like live rats that are still trying to chew off the the filth that's caked on to them. And like there's just like a dozen rats that run off in different directions. And uh, but then there, there's the the armor is laying on the ground with two rats in its hand. One that's like completely pulverized and is just basically rat and jelly. And the other one, like you can just see its ass end hanging out of the mound of meat as it's just like chewing its way into it. Okay. I would like to help. <laughs> Which one? Help the help the meat meat armor man. Um just like grab this rat by the tail and kind of fling it across the room. Okay. Um I guess that's what I'm gonna go for. Yeah, make a strength test to just grab it and um twelve. You grab it and you yank it out and it's it's trying to it tries to pull its like tries to pull itself up by its tail to bite your hand, but you flick it against the wall. Toss him, yeah. <laughs> and you hear like a pop and like the rat's body just slides down. <laughs> That's unsanitary. But you see like the body is just sitting there and you see there's just like a hole in this pile of meat. And <laughs> it's just the body is just like laying there on the ground. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, d- is he is he okay? I want to poke him. He doesn't move. Shit. Okay. Well, he fought valiantly. <laughs> against... You say we back out and lock the door. <laughs> yeah, we don't know anything. <laughs> we don't know anything about this. <laughs> don't know, I don't know nothing about nothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> we weren't even here. We haven't even been to the basement. There's <laughs> a basement? The basement? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know there was. There's a basement. I didn't know there was a basement here. <laughs> I don't even know what a basement is. I have never heard of it. Nor do I know anything don't about. Don't want to know. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't want to know. Yeah. Don't need to know. <laughs> okay, so uh, so that whole situation happened. Um, the ar- the armored meat man is just laying there amongst the dead rats um there are several live rats that are just not interested in fighting they're just um uh, running around one of them um squeezes its way under the door that leads out to the cellar door um and two other two of the other rats like run upstairs mm. okay this place has a severe infestation i know a guy i can recommend a guy uh his name is uh terry he's very good very qualified <laughs> um you uh you guys smell this very strong iron smell and um the like door blood. to the the door to the larder like creaks open and you can see it's all it's almost like some sort of bizarre sprinkler system of blood that's spraying down from the ceiling that's, put, that's putting out the fire. Ugh. Yuck. <laughs> Pretty nasty. And, and so very soon through the doorway, there's just like a puddle of blood that like oozes its way through into the room that you're in. <laughs> um, what are you guys going to do? Also, I don't know how long we're. I don't know how long we're playing. Are we? Uh, when it, whatever. We're I don't do. I don't have nothing going on tonight. I'm gonna just go. I'm gonna go do dishes after this. Okay. And make we some tacos. Either, we could either. That sounds good. We could either. <laughs> we could make this a multi part. <laughs> it was really supposed to only be a one shot, but we can make it a multi part if you guys want, or we can play for a little bit longer. It's up to you. I think it's gonna be a multi part. I do have something to do in the morning. We yeah. Can okay. Later. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, how about we figure out what you guys are gonna do, and then maybe just see where that goes, and then end it. 
for cool. tonight. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Maybe we can get to the bottom of what happened to uh to Corey's character. Maybe you know, maybe he'll return. Also, maybe uh I, if if Derek's available next time, maybe he's one of the trickers. Maybe he's one of the other have. kids, yeah. Yeah. Or Aaron, yeah. either one of yeah. them. But anyway, so cool. so there's blood seeping into the room. Uh the fire has been put out. Um you guys are just sitting in here in the in the basement with the meat man. Gets my better now? judgment. Let's drag the meat man out of here. Okay, are you gonna try and drag him upstairs, oh, no. or drag him into the room with the other where the rat thing came from? Because clearly they weren't looking. That's true. Nobody's gonna notice him in there. They didn't notice the giant rat thing. Well, Makes it's mostly just a point. bunch of rat bodies that are pulped now, and like, um. Just a pile of burnt feces and hair. Um, but yeah, you, you can drag the guy if you guys want to try. He's very heavy, but you can attempt to drag him somewhere else if you'd like. Personally, I'd like to drag him, but I, I got my sciatica to think of. So I, I think we should just leave him right here where he is. He looks he looks comfortable. He looks he's at peace. He looks very peaceful. <laughs> Okay. Is anyone gonna tip? To, are you guys gonna just leave him be, or are you gonna mess with him? We can leave him I be. Thought, I think we can leave him. I, yeah, I don't know anything about this. I I didn't see. I don't. I didn't know there was a basement. I didn't see anything about rats. I don't even know what a rat is, and I don't. <laughs> and I don't know what armor is either. <laughs> like, wait, wait, wait! wait. But it's, it's clothes, but they're hard. <laughs> hard clothes. <laughs> That'll make no sense. Exactly. <laughs> if it was a walking man of meat, how should I know where they would end up? Exactly. So, uh, so where are you? So, okay. So, if you're not dragging the meat man, where are you guys going? Back upstairs. Back upstairs. Okay. So you go back up to the top of the stairway. Um, you're in the hallway. You have the room, the taxidermy room, or there's the room where the people were doing the seance, or there is the upstairs area. Uh, let's go upstairs. Okay. Because I agree Agreed. that a seance does not sound like a... Uh, yeah, I don't like want it. to go in there. <laughs> no. I don't yeah. want to join them. <laughs> I do, but not yet. I'm not much of a joiner, really. Not much of a joiner. Okay, uh, so you make it to the top of the stairway, and uh, there is a hallway that branches off uh, to the right and to the left. Um, there are three doors on each side, and they're all shut. They're all shut. And she said to leave a, alone the ones that are locked, but those if they're shut, they're probably fine. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another there's another small table um in the middle of the hallway up against the wall that has a little lantern on it. Well, I, actually this is a this is actually a small jack o' lantern. Uh is it, is it illuminated or just a pumpkin? It's illuminated, yeah. I'm gonna take it. You go to reach down to grab it, and it goes, piss off! What if I don't want to? Make an agility <laughs> test. Make an agility test. 20. So natural 20, so tw natural 23. Fuck yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you uh, manage to grab a hold of it, from at such an angle that it can't bite you, but it's gnashing its little mouth at you. Going, <laughs> out, out. It's going, fuck off, piss ant. It's trying to bite your finger. <laughs> fuck off, piss ant. You seem a bit hangry. How would you like some meat? Shove some cooked mystery bean in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, you guys are like, you, you, you hear, you like smell burnt meat that, you know, starts to cook and the, Jack room starts going, blah, 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 blah. it's trying to, it's like eating it, but then it's trying to like, it's like choking on it almost. 
<laughs> it's like spitting it out. <laughs> and he goes, fuck you, fuck you. Make another agility test. Say 15. Okay. You still, you're like, ah, ah, trying to, like, you keep passing it from hand to hand, like, trying to avoid it biting your fingers. But it's just very angry, and it's just gnashing at your, at your hands. Um, <laughs> so How uh, rude. I pick it, I put up my briefcase and pick it inside and close it. You close it inside <laughs> the briefcase? Yeah. <laughs> the jack-o'-lantern? <laughs> yes. Awesome. You do you do that and it just squash. You hear it squash and like, <laughs> but but the weird thing is like, it you smell iron and you see like blood is dripping out of the briefcase. Oh, yuck! Mm. Well, I'm never getting my deposit back now. <laughs> oh, put Murray is going to be so oh, upset with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you hear th um, one of the doors on the right hand side opens up and this hunched over crunched up old woman with like a massive like slab of like muscle and gristle as a hump protruding upwards she walks over her hands are gnarled she says oh more guests come in come in she gestures to you guys to come into the room that she's just emerged from with her arthritic fingers and she looks down she looks down where your briefcase is is dripping and she goes oh someone needs to come and clean this mess up <laughs> yeah <laughs> carl middleton insurance <laughs> agent to the world i had a card <laughs> She takes your hand and like holds it, and her hands are very soft and grandmotherly. And Aww. she goes, "Oh, nice." To, she says, "Very nice to meet you." And she says, "Come, come, <laughs> please." Mm. I'm going to look at my compatriots and see oh, what they awesome. think. Okay, well, good enough. I got a okay, good sense so about people. I didn't make it 87 years without knowing people. So she so she ushers you guys into this room where you see there is a large wooden tub of water and hunched over it are six goblins that have their arms behind their back and they're biting at at something and plucking out of the water and spitting it onto the floor. You quickly realize that they are children's heads. And you see okay. one goblin. One goblin. One goblin in the corner is just sit, just like sitting there eating it like a ripe apple. Holy shit! <laughs> it's a macabre manner. <laughs> Verily, <laughs> my first instinct is goblins. I don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> currently they don't currently they don't they don't look um they don't seem to be hostile no and they um some of them actually have clothes on. some of them actually you see like have what could like what you assume to be goblins equivalent to costumes like there's one that has like a dead duck that's just tied around its it's like it has twine <laughs> around its right. uh, body and there's a dead duck that's just like pressed up against it and he's got like mud and feathers like stuck to different parts of his body, and that's just his duck costume. Yeah, his costume. Um, he's a duck. Obviously, that's yeah. good. Looks good. <laughs> yeah. There are others that just have like just cut, like might be covered in, in one of them's like covered in shit and has like a stick sticking up like out of the <laughs> pile of shit that's on his head. Um, others just have like mismatched clothes that they stole from people that they're wearing. But they're all just really invested in this bobbing for heads game. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so th they're not really paying too much attention to you guys. They're just kind of splashing around and trying to get the heads. And um, 
Cyril is in that room with the with the goblins too. He's just standing in the corner watching them, observing them. He just has his like hands crossed as he's watching them with disgust. <laughs> she the, the older woman with the hunchback, she says, Would you like to try? <laughs> um no, that's not my strong suit. Unfortunately, I ate before coming here, and I'm already quite full. But I I would love to circle back later to discuss your insurance needs. She looks at you, and she goes, she she pauses for a long time. She says, that'll be fine. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I agree. (laughs) I'm going to get out of here. (laughs) All right, so you guys step out into the hallway. (laughs) Uh, shut the door. All right. So uh, I know that this was a very um, chaotic episode. Uh, <laughs> I had some, some brain uh, frazzled occasionally. Um, that's why you should always be sure to get lots of sleep and ingest as many psychoactive chemicals as you can. Honestly, that's the uh, that's the lesson you gain from this. Yes, yes. <laughs> and 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 listen to that song by um, Kenny Rogers from the Big Lebowski. What is it? I, uh, just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. You should listen to that song. It's a nice, it's a solid song. I did, I didn't know that that was by Kenny Rogers. I didn't know that. Kenny Rogers used to party, I guess, you know. Huh. Used to have a... I don't remember get... which song that is. No. Up I, I was told at the grocery to... store the other day that I looked look like that guy. Kenny Rogers? Rogers? I don't really think so. Oh. But then again, I'm no, I'm no Kenny Rogers-ologist. I just... Uh, I know that he, you know, used to do stuff with Dolly Parton and... You know, all that. Dolly Parton. I yeah, like Dolly. Dolly Parton. Yeah, fucking. Yeah. yeah. He rules. <laughs> Dolly Parton rules. And uh, I don't know if anyone wants to plug anything. Corey would normally be talking about the animal shelter. So, um, you know, since he's not here, I'll yeah, say on his behalf. Um, you know, just shelter as many animals as you can. Don't care if it's the law telling you you have too many animals. Just have all of the animals. Shove them all into your shelter. Let them just (laughs) go hog wild and eat human food. Isn't that what animals like? Don't animals like human food? Because we season our food. Fill every available orifice with animals. Yes. Don't really be an animal hoarder, though. This is just a bit because I always say, (laughs) I always make fun of Corey saying something about the animal shelter and I say give the animal shelter all your animals but don't really do it just be like a normal person and not like a freak who's like oh 75 cats isn't too many meanwhile I've got mummified ones crushed under the junk in my house you know that's disgusting and horrible unless you've talked about all the quick crimes yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah well a lady in Coke yeah I've heard of it disgusting. I've heard of that happening in real life yeah I'm it's, it's horrible. It's, uh, yeah. It's gross. It do it. <laughs> Dude, it's I don't not, want the two cats that I do have. Yeah, I know. I don't <laughs> I got three little baskets myself. No, I actually love, I love my cats, but they're three boys, though, and they're just not very intelligent. Yeah. They're all dumb. <laughs> cats are dicks. Idiots. They are dicks. <laughs> um you should also uh you should listen to monster mashers podcast it's very good thanks that's christopher's podcast. yeah monster mash i you listened to mash. it yeah you guys did some live uh some live yeah, episodes I... right or, or live uh investigations yeah yeah we checked out um uh... Jim Jones Childhood Church, and then we oh, did the uh, Stone Mansion in Winchester. Yeah. yeah, and didn't you guys talk about what the difference is between a manor and a mansion? 
Yeah, yeah. Like a manor is like a historic building or something like that, but a mansion is just a building above a certain size. Fancy folks. Yeah. I was looking that up when I was deciding whether or not to call this the macabre mansion or macabre manor, but I thought manor sounded better. Hmm. As for the historical uh, significance, I guess we'll just have to see how it all shakes out, but... <laughs> Um, nobody died, so that's good. I think you guys played it pretty smart overall. Uh, you did murder some, you know, innocent people, but hey, it's Halloween. It's it's a wild time. It's a free for all, man. <laughs> it's Halloween. <laughs> Look at me purging again. You know, if they'd been properly insured against break-ins, this wouldn't that's have been true. an issue. That's right. true. Yeah, exactly. I mean. If anything, this could just be an advertisement for life insurance. Correct. Which I actually do think is a huge scam, but that's, you know, for another time. Oh, it, it totally is. <laughs> yes. My brother is a lot. My, my brother-in-law is, a, is one of those people, and he's a nice guy, but uh, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, 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 I just feel like it's the whole insurance, you know, thing is a racket. Anyway. Um, I hope this was enjoyable. I hope it wasn't just me looking like an asshole the whole time. Uh, I had fun, though. And uh, hopefully anyone watching this will have fun as well. Um, we'll do another episode. I don't know if that will be the conclusion of this. Or, I, I mean, it will. I mean, I don't know if it'll be like the end or if we'll, you know, it'll roll over. It just depends on if everybody survives. Also, when I was putting this together, let me know what everyone thinks. Um I, you know, I was thinking about, like, developing some sort of, like, time, you know, you can roll to see how long you're in the house without anything eventful happening. But I actually kind of hate that. So what I was thinking of doing is whenever someone plays, like, if, if this was ever, like, a published adventure, the rules would be, like, you just, you begin playing sometime in the evening. And then you play for as long as you possibly can. And so... Each room, I was I was thinking of making a table that's just like a hundred different random rooms with something different in each of them. That's pretty and, cool, man. And so then if you played, if someone played, they could literally, like a group could play all night if they wanted to. Or it's play all night or until everyone dies, basically. Yeah. I think that that could be interesting and fun. And, and or I until everyone like, dies, <laughs> which is yeah. which is pretty likely. Yeah, which is pretty likely, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I, I, I was thinking that was, might be an interesting idea. I don't know. Everybody let me know what you think about that. Um, obviously I'm not saying that we're going to do that necessarily. Um, but I'm just saying that if this ever became like a published adventure, I think that would be an interesting, uh, way to run it. Especially yeah, sure. because to me, Mork Borg is all about simplicity and not having to come up with a ton of brand new mechanics. It should be like pretty easy to you know understand right. some abilities i think you should be able to just read them and then that's what it does maybe there aren't any pluses or minuses it's just this thing does this like that makes sense to me if you if you speak with something happens and you're able to speak with animals it's not i think it should just be like you can do this it's a thing that you can do now whether or not you can get anything useful out of being able to do that you know that would be what the yeah roles would be for and it'd be very right. situational Honestly, talking to a squirrel, I mean, that usefulness of that would be to be determined, you know? Yeah, exactly. It you never know. Like, or a dog. Yeah. What the <laughs> he doesn't care. I, don't know. I hit some nuts. I don't know where I hit them. I'm going to find them. You want to find them with me? I got nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It depends, like, what you ask him, he's not going to know anything about nautical travel, but he might know something about, you know, living in the woods and scrounging for food and things like that. If it's in his wheelhouse, you know, so it just depends. The usefulness is, yes, like you said, is to, do, to be determined. But anyway, uh, I have been Condor. That's been me rambling this whole fucking time. And uh, I am Crow, and uh, this is the thing we did. Yes, it's another great... Oh, wait, no, this isn't... I almost went into oh. a whole thing about the Pistol packing pirates of Penis Island or something like that, but that's a different show entirely. This is <laughs> this is Rod Nethel's Macabre Manor, and we're we're gonna find out maybe if this place is 
uh, of significance in a historical fashion, or if it's actually a mansion, just a big ass house. So with that, uh, I'm going to say, you know, they can't all be gems, man. You're going to have some, some stink eggs every so often. So uh, happy Halloween. If you watch this next Halloween, or um, if you still book me, you know, or falling for my facade that this was filmed before Halloween, which it was not. So don't, 